Coming up next, high school football on your sports leader in Lorraine, WLCS TV 20. And one in the LEL, four and three overall, taking on Maple Heights. The Mustangs at 2-0 and in the LEL and 7-0 and overall. A little bit of a different sound here tonight as uh, we've had some technical difficulties here at Maple Heights. But I'll tell you what, first and foremost, a huge thank you and a tip of the cap goes out to Joe Bach, B-O-C-K, from WLCS-TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television. Uh, Joe has us hooked up in a unique way here tonight to bring the game to the fans in the Lorraine County area. So, again, a huge thank you to Joe Bach. So, somehow or another, we're going to get this game on the air tonight, Rob Clerico. Yeah, it, you know what? It, it, we always seem to get on the air. <laughs> it's always an adventure. I just stand back, watch you and Jared work, and then all of a sudden we're on the air. So, it happened again. This is probably the most last minute that I've ever experienced, but we're on. <laughs> Always happens that way. <laughs> All right, we're just a couple of minutes away from the opening kickoff. Again, a reminder, our pregame show brought to you by the Cobos Insurance Center. The Cobos Insurance Center, your local Grange Independent Agent in Elyria. And now Avon Lake is the Cobos Insurance Center. And tonight's Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. Ohio's number one orthopedic care is here for you in Lorraine County. Call 440-204-7800 for your appointment. That's 440 440- 204 7800 for your appointment. Oh, Adam Cahill is going to be here all night long as well. Good to see you, Adam. Yeah, you too. I, apparently, I'm, I'm a little overdressed now. <laughs> you know, I'm wondering, this is going to get a little technical for our listeners right now, but I'm wondering we could still have Adam down on the sideline. But he wouldn't be able to hear us, correct? Yes, we're dealing with technical issues, and right now, the playing of the National Anthem. rendition of the national anthem performed by the Maple Heights band here at Maple Heights Stadium. Boy, Rob Clerico, you and I were talking uh, before the ball game. It's been a while since we've been here at Maple Heights. This is a new facility since the last time we were here. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's only a few years old. The turf field, beautiful bleachers, a pristine press box. Absolutely gorgeous facility. Yeah, I've, I've actually never been to Maple Heights before and and this is, it's state of the art up here, a lot of room to move around. The field, like you said, is beautiful. The stands are beautiful. The school behind us looks like it's relatively new. So a lot of great work being done out here at Maple Heights. So we're just about ready to get this ball game underway. Our opening kickoff will be brought to you by Eco Tree Services. Complete tree care is more than removing problem trees. Learn more online at ecotreeservices.com. Well, Adam Cahill. Are you used to watching this from press box level? I, I mean, I do do some Medina County matchups. <laughs> That's, so I, I usually, I'm not used to doing it, you know, on the air. Usually it's, it's on the internet or on the stream, but it's it's nice different vantage point to get a little bird's eye view. <laughs> Lorraine, out in the wind. Lorraine will have the football, and they will go right to left along your radio dial as the Mustangs will defend the goal to our left. So, Adam, you talk when we were down on the field for our pregame show about the wind here tonight. Uh, it'll be 
Maple Heights with the wind at their back here in that first quarter of play. So this high-octane offense that we've talked about where they can really throw it around uh, the first quarter will be an opportunity to do that for them when they get it offensively. And that'll by your point, the, the, the Lorraine run game will come into play. If they can grind it out and keep it close during this quarter, you can go up top and hit some big plays in the second to keep yourself in the game. That'll be that'll be important to play that and watch the at, towards the end of quarters when they're going to switch how how aggressive or conservative teams are since they know they're going to be flipping the field over. A little bit of a later start here tonight. It's senior night here at Maple Heights. Uh, their final two games will be on the road. So uh, they were a little bit late getting started, but now we're underway. Short kickoff taken by one of the tight nut men out to the 35 to the 40 and upended at about the 43-yard line. Tyshawn Lighty for Lorraine High, an electrifying player, 5'10 junior. A nice kick return there of about 24 yards. So the Titan drops start off in great field position. First down and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Yes, it's surprising with that win that that ball didn't go a little bit deeper, but with the short kickoff and the, the nice return, Lorraine's set up pretty nicely right now. And here come the Titans, first down and 10 at their own 44. Jordan Jackson, 6'4", junior, is the quarterback. He has been terrific all season long. Inside handoff, that's Cairo Smith. Tried to bounce outside, and he had nowhere to go. Cairo Smith brought down at the 44, no gain on the play. That'll make it second down and 10. Let's set that Lorraine High offensive line for you. Dave McFarland referenced his freshman center, ninth grader Jacob Addis, 235-pound freshman. Arthur Lucas and Jace Tarpley are the guards. Yosef Elzir and Kalen Thomas are the tackles. Second and 10, Jackson again hands off. And this time it's Savon Chavis. Chavis to about the 45, shoved back. Gang tackling there by Maple Heights. Short gain of one. That'll make it third down and nine. Well, that's a swarming Mustang defense. It is, and that's one thing I noticed what Coach McFarland said before the game was how active Maple Heights defense was and, and how they chased the ball, and I think we've already seen that in the first two plays. Third down and nine. First possession of the ball game. We're just underway here at Maple Heights. Titans going right to left on your radio dial. They've got the wind in their face, and it's a strong wind tonight here at Maple Heights. Boy, the big 6'4 junior, Jordan Jackson. He can look over that defense. Rolling to the right, Jackson with some room, gets to the midfield strike, and spun down at the 49-yard line of Maple Heights. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. Jackson with a keeper, but he didn't get enough. Jackson, of course, a star for Lorraine High's basketball team that went to the Final Four last year. Well, Lorraine High lining up like they're going to go for it. They're going into the wind. And on a fourth down and three, an early gamble by Dave McFarland. Well, let's see. They hand it off, and it doesn't go anywhere. Thrown down right at the 50-yard line. Dalen Dower, and the ball will go over on downs. So Lorraine goes for it on fourth down, Rob. They roll the dice, and boy, it comes up snake eyes. It does, and um, you know what? You, sometimes you have to put faith in that offensive line and tell them early on that you trust them, and then also you're telling your defense that you tr trust them. So I think it's a, a good gamble this early in the game at midfield because they still have 50 yards to go. So with 10.05 to go here in the first quarter, the Mustangs get it for the first time tonight. They will start this drive at the Lorraine High 49-yard line. Lorraine go for, going for it on fourth down on their first possession. They come up short. Devin Dial is the Maple Heights quarterback. Dial looking right, throwing right, complete to Dante Abrams. Abrams hemmed in right in front of that Mustang bench, eludes a couple of tackles, and then got bounced out of bounds, and he may have been grabbed by the face mask. Looked like his head twisted a little bit right in front of that Maple Heights bench. It's either that or you might get one, a hold. You get a lot of times on those screens when you get those guys in space. Those receivers aren't used to blocking and it will take a, a handful of jersey. Well, let's see. The flag went down, and they're going to march it off against Lorraine High. Yep, it was a face mask. So the penalty marched off, and that gives Maple Heights a first down and 10 at the Titan 37-yard line. Just under 10 minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. Scoreless ball game. Maple Heights has it for the first time tonight. They're at the Lorraine 37. Ball at the right hash mark. 5'8 senior Devin Dial awaits the snap. 
He's in that pistol formation. Inside handoff, Manny Ramsey, and Ramsey dropped right at the 37. No gain on the play. Let's set that Titan defense. They play a 3-4. Isaiah McDowell is the nose guard. Malik McCall and Nate Melendez are the defensive ends. The two inside linebackers, Kelvin Torres and Cairo Smith on the outside. Zach Evans came to Lorraine from Elyria Catholic. Jalen Cheers is the other outside linebacker. We'll set the secondary after the second and nine play. Dial awaits the snap. Dial from his own 42 steps up. He got hit as he threw it, and he overshot his intended receiver here on the near side. He was looking for Antoine Holloway, and it will set up a third down and nine. So we talked about pressure on the quarterback. They were able to get in the face of Dial on that throw, Rob. Yeah, and they're doing it with a minimum number of uh, rushers, too. They So far in the, the, this game, they've gone with three down linemen and two inside backers, and they've um, used the rest of the six defenders as cover men. Four receiver set, two right, two left. Dial back to pass. Again, he's hit as he throws it, and the catch made on the near side and knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line was Holloway. Holloway, let's see where they spot him, thrown out at about the 28. Boy, that was a terrific grab by Antoine Holloway coming into tonight. 15 receptions on the year. Big-time playmaker, just under 24 yards per catch. He's about a yard shy of that first down. And Maple Heights looks like they're going to do the same thing Lorraine Hyde did and go for it on fourth down. They split two receivers wide to the left, the wide side of the field. Dial in that pistol formation, fourth and short. Motion to the right goes Ramsey. Inside handoff, and boy, it'll depend on the spot. There was a little bit of forward progress, and then the ball carrier got thrown back. Lorraine High celebrating. They're saying he didn't get there. In fact, the Titan offense is already coming out on the field. Maple may be asking for a measurement right here. Boy, there was a just a smidge of forward progress. And then the running back was thrown back. And, of course, you may hear me say once or twice tonight about the maroon letters on right. the black jerseys. It's tough to read those numbers down there. It is. At least it's outlined in white, making it a little bit easier, but it's, t it's tough going. See, you sideline guys when you're down there. You don't have to worry about those dark <laughs> numbers on dark jerseys. Ad. Now, now I had the Highland game a couple of weeks ago with the black and green, which oh, yeah. is just as tough as the, as the maroon and black there. It, it was needed the binoculars. <laughs> They're bringing the chains out, and no, he did not get it. The ball goes over on downs to Lorraine High. See, if you were down there tonight, Adam, I'd say, let's go down to the sideline and see just how close it was. <laughs> it didn't look like it was more than maybe a foot and a half there, Tim. Uh, good job by the Lorraine defense. A lot of push up the middle. And by the way, even though Adam is up here with us tonight, if he was down on the sideline, we have to credit our sponsor. We would have sideline reports from Stewart Appliance for the friendly personal service that's kept customers coming back for over 72 years. Visit Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. So Lorraine gets the stop. So the two teams exchange possessions. First down and 10 for the Titans. They will start at their own 28-yard line. Jordan Jackson gives it to Lighty coming in motion now. Tyshawn cuts it back, gets to the 30, outside to the 35, he's to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, and finally shoved into the Titan bench on the far side of the field. There is a flag on the play, though. This one may be coming back, but, boy, that demonstrates the explosiveness of one Tyshawn Lighty. It does, and Lorraine went empty formation there with just the quarterback, um, put Lighty in motion for the jet sweep, but when you have that many blockers out in space it's a lot easier for officials to see if your hands get outside the frame of your body and that's when you get a lot of holding calls on uh, sweep plays like that and that's a holding call right there so the big run by Tyshawn Lighty will come back boy he's a playmaker coming into tonight 21 reception 17 yards per catch he's carried the ball 20 yards over nine yards per carry but that one brought back on the holding call it's from the spot of the foul, so it only results in a loss of one. It's second down, or excuse me, first down. First and 11 for Lorraine High, spot of the foul. And now we've got some movement, and we've got an illegal procedure call against Lorraine High. So two straight penalties against the Titans, and they're going backwards. Again, Lorraine coming in. 
in the LEL. They're one and one, four and three overall. Maple Heights with that perfect season under their first year head coach, Shaq Washington, two and zero, oh, seven and zero oh overall. Well, just a terrific young man. It was good to talk to him down on the field before the game. He Jackson was, rolling left, throwing, and it's incomplete as he was looking for Dalen Dower, who had circled out of the backfield, missed him at about the 25-yard line. Coach Washington certainly was impressive. Uh, spoke well beyond his 25 years and really has a good idea of what his role is in a community like Maple Heights as the head football coach. Second down and 16 now for Lorraine High. Ball spotted at their own 22-yard line. 8.52 to go here in the first quarter of play. We are scoreless. Special Thursday night edition of high school football. Quick flip to the left. Dalen Dower has it. Gets to the 30. Tries to bounce off a tackle and does. Now lowers the shoulder and got back to the 30-yard line. May have tumbled forward to the 31. Boy, he's one tough customer. Dalen Dower, 195-pound junior. How about these eye-popping rushing stats? 809 yards coming into tonight, averaging 14.7 per carry. That young man can do some damage. He also has 11 receptions, now 12 after that catch, averaging just over 11 yards per catch. Third down and eight, ball at the 30-yard line. Jackson, quick hitter to the right, and now it's a double pass. They're going to hang it deep down the right side, and the catch is made at the 42-yard line. Immediately tackled after making the catch. I'm trying to spot the number down there for Lorraine High. Might have been Carrillo Edwards. It might have been Edwards, but the double pass is successful. And Lorraine High with the ball at the Maple Heights 42-yard line. When you're going up against a defense that gives up less than seven points per game, you've got to throw something different at them once in a while. Yeah, the, I think the wind actually helped him there. It held the ball up in the air because he didn't have separation over the top of the defender, but he was able to come back for it almost like a back shoulder throw. First down and 10. Titans at the Maple Heights 42-yard line. Jordan Jackson using a lot of that play clock. Trying to burn up some clock. And now we've got a timeout taken by Lorraine High. So we'll take a quick timeout. 7.36 to go here in the first quarter of play. We're scoreless, but the Titans are on the Maple Heights side of the 50. We're coming back to Maple Heights Stadium after this. Our Cleveland Clinic Thursday night gridiron clash on AM 930 WEOL. On your phone with the WEOL app. And Rob, we're online. At WEOL.com. We make Marines who overpower the desire to quit with the perseverance to prevail. Not for glory, but for honor. For a code that isn't written or spoken, but lived. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's the battle cry of our fighting spirit. Battles won. See all the battles Marines fight to win at Marines.com. Welcome back to Maple Heights, and first play after the timeout, Jackson looking left, and that ball was a wobbler as he intended that for Devontae Jackson here on the left side, and it flew incomplete, sets up a second down and 10. Tim Elkhorn, Rob Clerico, and Adam Cahill in the booth here at Maple Heights. Steve Bailey, a very patient Steve Bailey, back in the studios of AM 930 WEOL. Again, a huge thank you, Joe Bach. WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television. Direct snap to Dalen Dower. So they direct snap to Dalen Dower, and he's got some room inside the 35, but they'll put his knee down at the 35 yard line of Maple Heights. We'll set up third down and three, and now Lorraine High quickly to the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to direct snap again. They are. Dower lowers the shoulder, and he got stuffed at the 34 yard line. Gain of one will make it fourth and two, and you would think that. Lorraine went for it on their first possession at the 50. They're certainly going to go for it here at the 34. Yeah, they're not even discussing whether they should or not. They're going to line up, and they're going to see if Dower can get the first down for them. So fourth down play, second time tonight. Lorraine's going for it on fourth down. Dower's going to run it to the left. Now he cuts it up the middle, got to the 30, and got the first down. Boy, that's great instinctive running by Dalen Dower. It wasn't there to the left. He saw a bit of a crease back to the middle. Correct. His lead back went to the outside as if it was a sweep, but he saw that that uh, seam open up, and he knew he only needed three yards, so they're 
Shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and he went in that direction. First down and 10 for the Titans. They're at the Maple Heights 30-yard line with 6.40 and the clock running here in the first quarter of play. Jackson back in the game. Quick throw to the right ball. Dropped by Tyshawn Lighty. That'll make it second down and 10. So Lorraine Hine mixing it up a little bit. Uh, they've killed play clock. They've gone quick snap. They've gone Dalen Dower on a direct snap. So they've done a little bit of everything here. Yeah, and it's that's a great game plan to keep that defense off balance. And we talked about an aggressive defense that likes to run around and hit. You get them in, going the wrong way and cut it back the other way, you can have some big gains. So good job so far by uh, the offensive staff at the Titans. Second down and 10 for Lorraine. They are at the Maple Heights 30-yard line. Second possession of the night for Lorraine High. Looking to end Maple Heights' unbeaten season. Jackson with a pump fake. Now Jordan rolling right. Look out! Down! He's going to go. Yes, at the 43. Boy, Jackson with a little pump fake to the left. Tried to spin right, and he just got corralled and thrown down for a big loss of about 13. Yeah, they had a double move down here at the bottom of the field where they're trying to take it advantage of Mabel Heights aggression. So first we had the double pass, thinking that the entire defense is gonna flow to that uh, screen look. And now they start, they try the uh, double move and uh, Mabel Heights covered it well. Third and 22 for Lorraine Hyde. Jackson rolling to the right, setting up the screen to the middle, ball's tipped and then caught. Oh, what a catch by Lighty after the tip. And Tyshawn got it back to about the 34 yard line. It'll be fourth and 14. Boy, Tyshawn Lighty caught his own tip. Yes. Great concentration by Lighty to stay with it after he tipped it. It was, and that was, that was a nice pass, too, because um, one of the Maple Heights defenders didn't bite on the drop back pass. It was standing there right in front of Lighty, and the ball was just lofted right over the top of his hands. That'll set up fourth and 14. So Lorraine High again will go for it. Third time tonight that the Titans have said we're going for it. Now the other two were much shorter distances. Jackson gets the snap. Jordan with plenty of time. Throws over the middle. And it's in and out of the hands of a defensive back, which is actually a break for Maple Heights. As the ball will simply go over on downs back at the 33-yard line. Good thing he didn't pick that off because it was almost intercepted down at about the 10-yard line. So Maple, Heart, Maple Heights will start this drive at their own 33. First down and 10. We are scoreless. 5.05 to go here in the first quarter of play. Again, a great big thank you to Joe Bach from WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television. Joe has tied into our audio feed tonight. He's going to get a much better audio feed than our listeners are right now. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Joe providing us the equipment to get this game on the air back at WEOL. What would we do without Joe Bach? <laughs> right. First down and 10 for Maple Heights. Handoff, Manny Ramsey. Oh, excuse me, no, out to the 45 to the 50 and down the right side all the way to the 38-yard line. And for Maple Heights on that carry was Dial. So Dial kept it himself. Devin Dial, the 5'8 senior quarterback, and he rips off a huge gain all the way down to the Titan 38-yard line. That was a great fake because both you and I were looking at the running back and no one was tackling him. I didn't know why any of the defenders weren't going after him. It's because he didn't have the ball. Yep. Boy, great play fake by Devin Dial. He fooled me. First down and 10 for the Mustangs at the Titan 38-yard line. 435 left here in the first quarter of play. This time Dial slams the left side and dropped it about the 36. By the way, we never mentioned that Titan secondary for you. The cornerbacks are Cameron Davis and Devontae Jackson. The safeties are Savon Chavis and Tyshawn Lighty. Second down and about eight for the Mustangs. Scoreless game here at Maple Heights Stadium. Only a beautiful new facility here at Maple Heights. Three receivers to the right, one to the left as Dial awaits the snap. Actually, it's Holloway. Holloway now in at quarterback, and Holloway got down about the 24-yard line before he took a pretty good lick. Down he went, but that'll move the chains. First down and 10 for Maple Heights. Lorraine's been giving a lot of different looks defensively, and um, right now they've been putting mostly six defensive backs to cover the pass, but that's been opening up the run on this drive. Antoine Holliday, Holloway, excuse me, 
5'9 senior, now the quarterback bobbles the snap, regains it, heads to the right, has a blocker in front of him, got to the 25, and finally collared down at about the 22-yard line. Nice tackle there by Nate Melendez for Lorraine High. Gain of about five, will make it second down and five. 325 left here in the first quarter of play. We mentioned earlier, senior night for Maple Heights, their final two games are on the road for Lorraine High, their final two games at home. Lorraine High next Friday night will be taking on Bedford, and then they'll close out the regular season against Shaw. Second down and five. Three minutes to go here in quarter number one. Maple Heights with a threat just outside the red zone. They have the ball at the 21-yard line of Lorraine, and now Maple Heights will take a timeout. So we'll take a break. 2.54 to go here in Quarter number one, we are scoreless. Lorraine High and Maple in this special Thursday night edition of our Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash on AM 930 WEOL. On your phone with the WEOL mobile app. And Adam, we're also online. At WEOL.com. Sergeant Michelle Garcia served meritoriously in Iraq and has the medals to prove it. Soon after leaving the Navy, Lieutenant Chris Scott found a job, a home, and started a family of his own. Corpsman Richard Stokely took the skills he learned in Vietnam and put them to good use as a paramedic. But soon after leaving the military, each of these veterans fell on hard times and faced homelessness. Even after Michelle lost all her savings, even after Chris wasn't able to pay his mortgage, and even after Richard battled alcoholism for years, they each reached out for help when they needed it most. A simple phone call put them in touch with a trained professional from the Department of Veterans Affairs. That call got Michelle a place to stay until she could afford one of her own, put Chris in touch with employment assistance, and found Richard a substance abuse program. These veterans are success stories not only for how they were able to help others while serving their country, but for how they were able to let others help them. If you know of or are a veteran in need, make the call. Welcome back to Maple Heights. Off the timeout, Mustangs with the football. Second down and five at the Titan 21-yard line. 2.54 to go, first quarter of play. Maple Heights looking to score the game's first points. Devin Dial is the quarterback, inside handoff, spinning and driven down was Ramsey. Wow, did he get blasted. Oh, what a hit by the Titans defensively. My goodness. And Kelvin Torres is limping off the field, but he's the one that made first contact there. Got some great penetration to blow that play up. But hopping off on one foot, usually we tell the players to just lay down on the field. But Especially with a high-octane quick offense like yeah, Maple. Yeah. yeah. Make them wait a little bit. Third down and six. Dial looking right, throwing right, catch made, and shoved out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. And that was Devon Fox. Well, he's a big-time player. Fox, a six-foot senior, has 11 touchdowns on the year. 25 receptions, averaging 25 yards per catch. All sorts of Division I offers. And that's a first down for Maple as they put the ball at the 15-yard line. First down and 10 for the Mustangs. Looking to break a scoreless tie with 2.16 to go here in the first quarter of play. Dial's going to take it right up the middle, lowers the shoulder, and got stuffed at about the 14-yard line. You would think that Maple Heights would have great wide receivers and they would be well coached. Shaq Washington, the all-time leading receiver at Cincinnati. I think that shows up on the field. All of these receivers have run great routes, very precise. Um, you can see that their offense is based on timing, some quick routes. They haven't really thrown anything deep, even with the wind. So a, a lot of their yardage has come from run after the catch. Second and nine at the 14-yard line. Ball at the right hash mark as Dial awaits the snap. Gave it to Ramsey. Ramsey with the crease to the 10, to the 5, and he's in for the touchdown. Oh, that was a terrific run. Manny Ramsey, a 14-yard touchdown run with 1.34 to go here in the first quarter of play. And the Mustangs jump out to a 6 to nothing lead. Well, how about the cutting ability of Ramsey right there? Just, just a little jitterbug guy there. Just great cuts, and then when he made his decision, boom, he was gone uh, down the field for a touchdown. But it was, in, it was interesting to see that game of cat and mouse but with uh, Maple House and Lorraine. Lorraine with those six defensive backs throughout most of this game, so Maple Heights is going, if you're going to try and cover us, we're going to run the ball. And, of course, that touchdown means another $10 
From Jamie's Carpet Shop to Second Harvest Food Bank and our Touchdowns to Tackle Hunger campaign, Maple going for two on the inside handoff, pushing towards that goal line. And it's good. Boy, they just got it across on the two-point conversion run. So Maple Heights now with an eight to nothing lead after the two-point conversion. So the Mustangs with the lead. And again, that touchdown, $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank and our touchdowns to Tackle Hunger, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop. So let's see if the Titans can respond. 1.34 to go here in quarter number one. Tonight's Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic, offering same-day sports injury appointments in Lorain County. To get back in the game, call 440-204-7800. You can see why this Mustang team is 7-0. They've got explosiveness on offense. They really swarm the football defensively. They are quick. And as we mentioned earlier, Shaq Washington in his first year as the head coach, only 25 years old. And yet, this, this is a young man that, as you said, Rob, very appropriately, he speaks well beyond his years. For sure. And I'm really impressed by the way Maple Heights just looks so well coached. Everything that they do is done with a purpose and is done efficiently, and uh, they've been fun to watch so far this game. Kickoff brought to you by Eco Tree Services, your complete tree care company. Their second generation arborists have roots dating back to 1964. So Lorraine Hyde trailing by a score of eight to nothing. Tim Elkhorn, Rob Clerico, Adam Cahill, on-site engineer Jared Kozar here at Maple Heights Stadium. A very short kick. It will bounce and fielded by one of the upmen for Lorraine at the 30 to the 35 and dropped right there for Lorraine High. Is one of the upmen. That was Javon Manning. That's another young man that was on John Rossitano's basketball team. Rob, you were asking me as we were getting ready to make the drive over here tonight if I'm ready for basketball. <laughs> yeah, we've got that schedule all put together. We're pumped up. Although we're hoping to go deep in the month of November with some high school football playoffs as well. Of course, but it sneaks up on you, doesn't it? It sure does. Jordan Jackson awaits the snap. Titan quarterback inside handoff, Dalen Dower. And boy, he got spun down right at the 35-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. The Lorraine High offensive line has not been able to get any push so far. Again, Addis at center, Arthur Lucas and Jace Tarpley at the guards, Yusef Elzir and Kalen Thomas are the tackles. Second and 10 play, another handoff. They slam it in the right side, and Dower got to about the 39-yard line. We'll set up a third down and long for Lorraine High. Of course, that Titan offensive line coached by longtime Lorraine County area coach and longtime assistant to Dave McFarland, Bill Grooms. Had a chance to see Dave in the, or excuse me, Bill in the parking lot before the ball game. That was a pleasant conversation. It was. <laughs> Jackson looks right, throws right, catches made by Lighty right in front of that Titan bench, but he got spun out of bounds short of the first down. Clock will stop with 26 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And it'll be fourth and about three for Lorraine High. Will he go for it again? At his own 44. It looks like. It looks like he's going to. Perhaps with that wind in their face and knowing he's facing a electric offense in Maple Heights, Dave McFarland saying, you know what, we're on the road. Let's go for it right here. Or maybe Jordan Jackson will try to draw them off sides. Jordan, long snap count, looking over at the bench. Well, he takes the snap. Jackson's going to roll to the right. Jackson has the first down to the 50 and finally knocked out of bounds. Boy, the long and a late snap. Hit. And now some flags after Jackson went out of bounds. And you wonder if Maple Heights thought, well, he's trying to draw us offside, and they right. relaxed a little right. bit. They got lulled to sleep a bit there, and then almost right at the end of the uh, play clock there, Call, takes the snap and runs around the end, and that's a good call there by Coach McFarland. Well, a great call, and again, there may be a late hit on Maple. There is. So the first down on the fourth down play 
And now they'll tack some more on to it, and all of a sudden, Lorraine's in business. 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. The penalty will put the ball at the Maple Heights 33-yard line. First down and 10. Lorraine trailing 8 to nothing. Jackson will await the snap at the 33-yard line. Ball closer to the right hash mark. Two receivers to the left. And now Dave McFarland says, I'll take a timeout. We'll keep it right here with 20 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Tonight's Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic, getting you back in the game with expert sports medicine care. Call 440-204-7800 for your appointment. I want to remind you that while we have a special Thursday night edition of high school football here on WEOL, another big Friday night of coverage on AM 930 tomorrow night. Boy, we've got a terrific lineup of games on the radio side. We talked about second harvest and the touchdowns to tackle hunger. How much money will they raise tomorrow night on that radio game? Berea Midpark <laughs> taking on Avon Lake. Chris Seitler over at Davies Carpet Shop. He better open up the vault. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I don't know if Berea could score 70 <laughs> against Avon Lake like they, they have already this year. But, yeah, I am uh, paying my... <laughs> money to go and watch that game tomorrow. I'm going as a spectator because I'm too interested in that game. Berea Midpark, Avon Lake, our radio game. Elyria Catholic at Bay, stream two. Elyria High at Medina, our Medina County matchup. Inside handoff, Dalen Dower off the timeout. Boy, Jackson almost lost that snap in the pistol. Dower scampers down to about the 30-yard line. Set up second down and seven. We're down to five, four, three. That'll do it for the first quarter here at Maple Heights. So one period is in the book, and one score is on the board. Maple Heights with a touchdown and a two-point conversion, and the Mustangs lead the Lorraine High Titans eight to nothing at the end of one. We're coming back to Maple Heights. Quarter number two gets underway after this timeout on our Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash on AM 930 WEOL. On your phone, download the WEOL mobile app. Rob, we're online at WEOL.com. First play of quarter number two. Jackson throws down the middle, complete to Evans at the 20, and Zach Evans falls forward to about the 16-yard line. Boy, he's a big target, 6'4 senior, and Zach Evans with his 32nd catch of the year, and that'll move the chains first down and 10. As we welcome you back to Maple Heights, Tim Elkhorn, Rob Clerico, Adam Cahill, a multitasking Jared Kozar behind us. Joe Bach, WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television, tied into our audio. First down and 10, Lorraine High at the Maple Heights 17-yard line. 8 nothing. they trail it. Jackson rolling to the right. Jackson looking downfield. Jackson lobs it and simply threw it out of bounds. Smart play. Yes. Jordan Jackson very calmly just kept rolling to the right and finally said there's nothing there. Let's play for another down. It'll be second down and 10. 11.29 to go here in the first half of play. Coming up at the half, we'll have our Gallon Takis Boys and Alt Halftime Show. That's coming up at the intermission. Second down and 10. Lorraine High at the Maple Heights 17-yard line. Lorraine High now with the wind at their back. Talked about that in the pregame. Ball at the left hash mark. Jordan Jackson. Titan quarterback has Evans to the left, two receivers to the right, the wide side of the field. Jackson steps up under a rush. Now he's going to run. He got to the 10, to the 5. Jackson is close, and he's in for the touchdown. Oh, what a run by Jordan Jackson. 6'4", junior quarterback for Lorraine High. That's his sixth touchdown of the year, and it gets Lorraine to within two, 8-6. Titans trail it with 11.20 to go. Here in quarter number two, nice run 
by it, the junior quarterback. It was. I liked how decisive he was. You could tell that he went through his first two reads. Nothing was there. He looked in front of him, and the seas parted. You know, on that pass rush, for some reason, those defensive tackles didn't keep their pass lanes, and there was a lot of room for him to run straight ahead. So Jackson with the 17-yard touchdown run. That's another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop. And our touchdowns to tackle hunger. Extra point attempt by Mark Rodriguez is no good. So it's still an 8-6 to six ball game. Boy, Adam Cahill, that was a nifty run by one Jordan Jackson. He showed some tremendous athleticism right there. And a great job there to feel the pressure because there was a guy, uh, Maple Heights defender, that had a clean shot at him. So to, to feel that and to be able to step up and then have the presence of mind to make a couple of guys miss and tuck the ball so you're not getting it knocked out as you're running. As you know, quarterbacks tend to carry that ball out there sometimes. And uh, that's, a, that's a good job there by Jordan Jackson. <laughs> You know, they carry the football, they got to protect it. Sometimes you got to hold that mic up, too. <laughs> I'm, used to the I'm used to having the headset on when I'm up, when I'm up in the booth Hill, here. high and tight, Cahill. <laughs> See, I didn't. I was never running back. 8-6, Jordan Jackson with the touchdown run for Lorraine High. Gets him to within two with 11.20 to go here in the first half of play. Yeah, this is one we'll be talking about after the season oh, is for over. Sure. <laughs> a lot of interesting things unfolding here at Maple Heights. It's a good thing it's a Thursday and Jared doesn't have to work the grease board. <laughs> I think Jared. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't think Jared would be on the grease board tonight. <laughs> I think we'd be on our own. All right, next kickoff being brought to you by EcoTree Services. Call for 24-hour emergency service or online. Visit EcoTreeServices.com. So Lorraine High back to within two. It's an 8-6 to six ball game. Again, Lorraine has made the trip to Maple Heights, 1-1 one one in the LEL, 4-3 and three overall, trying to knock Maple Heights from the ranks of the unbeaten. Maple at 2-0 and oh in league play, 7-0 and oh overall. Kickoff heading towards the far sideline, and it simply goes out of bounds. So it will be Maple Heights football at the 35-yard line. Again, Joe Bach, WLCS TV 20, Lorraine City Schools Television has tied into our audio feed tonight. We appreciate that very much. So all of you back in Lorraine, you'll be able to watch this one on WLCS TV 20 very soon. And, of course, don't forget about the TV 20 YouTube channel. Yes, it's that great scouting tool for yes, all of the opposing absolutely, coaches. Absolutely. <laughs> if I played Lorraine, I'd be downloading every single one of those. At least they're not hiding it. <laughs> First down in 10, Mustangs at their own 35-yard line, leading this game 8-6. to six. Jackson's touchdown has gotten Lorraine to within two. Devin Dial is the Mustangs quarterback. Dial under a rush, Smith chasing him. Dial now will simply run out of bounds into that Titan bench. Cairo Smith, senior inside linebacker, came blasting in on the blitz, and, and Dial kind of running for his life, finally said, I'll think better of it, and scoot out of bounds. Good pressure. The, tough, the toughest pressure is straight up on the inside, up the middle. That's the most difficult for quarterbacks. Uh, they can ev evade edge rushes like we saw on, on the touchdown for Lorraine, but up, that, up the middle pressure is difficult. Second down and 12, loss of two on the play. Mustangs now at their own 33-yard line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Inside handoff and not going anywhere on that play. Was a new running back in there for Maple Heights. Didn't catch the number on that. But it was somebody that I didn't recognize, but I know he went down for a loss of two at the 31-yard line. That'll make it a third down and 13. Boy, big series right here for Lorraine. If they could get a three and out and oh, get the ball yeah. back to their offense, which put together a nice drive on their last series. Third and 14. Mustangs need to get to the 45-yard line. Dial under the rush. Up the middle. Now he rolls right, throws, and a sliding catch made at the 40. Will they give it to him? Yes, but again, five yards shy of the first down. So a sliding catch right in front of that Titan bench. Nice athletic catch, but five yards shy of the first, and Shaq Washington says, all right, we're not going to gamble right here. We'll punt into the win, though. So Lorraine should, good, should get good field position. Yeah, uh, that'll be uh, 
that'll be, as you said, the theme. You've seen Lorraine already be a little bit more aggressive when they've been going that way. And you can already kind of see how it's, it's even the with them throwing short passes, it, it seems to have hamstrung the Mustang offense a little bit. So Lorraine High is going to get it back. They scored on their last possession. They pulled it within two. It's an eight to six ball game. And there's a kick into the wind. And sure enough, it just holds up into that win. And it takes a tight bounce, and it's down at the 43-yard line. It's about a 22-yard punt, so right into the teeth of that wind. And sure enough, Lorraine High will have it. First down and 10, great field position. Titans trailing 8-6. to six. Lorraine High won this game last year 48-19, to 19, but... Dave McFarland was saying before the ball game, this is a different Maple Heights football team than they've seen the past couple of years. Right, and a different Lorraine team. You know, they graduated a lot of uh, seniors and are trying to work some younger players than what Maple Heights was doing last year. That's a great point. Handoff, Jordan Jackson gave it to Dowerdale into the 50, 45, 40. He's to the 35, to the 30, 25, 20. 10, and finally shoved out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Yeah, was, and then he got catapulted after he went out of bounds, and so they'll tack a couple of more yards onto it. There's the big bust-out play we've been waiting for from Dalen Dower. We talked about it, Rob, the fact coming into tonight, 14.7 per carry. So right. that's not the first time he's busted a long one this year. I was going to say, you see 14.7, and then he gets a few carries that are two and three, and you're wondering where where is that 14-yard average. Well, you forget a 14-yard yard average is because he's going to rip one off that's about 60 yards. First and goal for Lorraine High. The Titans have it at the Maple Heights five-yard line. Jackson in that pistol. Now he's got a couple of backs back there with him. Jackson. Gave it Cairo Smith. Smith is in for the touchdown. Cairo Smith blasted in from five yards out. The 210-pound senior has put Lorraine into the lead. It is now a 12-8 Titan advantage. 10.07 to go here in the first half of play. That was pretty efficient. That was quick. <laughs> that drive did not take much time off the clock. And, Rob, we go back to the three and out. Right. That the Titan defense was able to force, get the ball right back to their offense, and now that Titan offense feeling real good about themselves. Two scores on two straight possessions. And how big have fourth downs been? How many times Lorraine has gone on fourth down and then got it, and then on fourth down the punt here by Maple Heights that didn't really go anywhere. And, of course, that touchdown means another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop and our touchdowns to tackle hunger. Lorraine going for two, direct snap, Tyshawn Lighty, tried the right side, pushing, pushing. He didn't get there. He got stood up right at the one. Boy, there was just a big blob there at the one-yard line. I mean, there were, I think, 20 of the 22 guys on the field were right at that one-yard line, and they were just pushing for each side, and Lighty finally just stopped at the one. But Lorraine High now with a 12-8 to lead, 10.07 to go first half. And uh, this is now the, the second tied for, the second most points this Maple Heights defense has given up all year, uh, 14 being the most. So if you're Lorraine, you have to feel really good about this first half. And you've been able to make their offense kind of stall. They've, they've had trouble getting into a rhythm so far. And uh, that's a credit to the Titans' defense. They've, they've done a great job on both sides of the ball so far. Boy, Rob, uh Adam brings up a great point. This Maple Heights defense, less than seven points per game coming into tonight. And as Adam just said, uh, Lorraine already with 12 on the board and and two straight drives where they've been able to punch it in. They've, they've been very efficient the last two times they've had the football. And I think that's big for a young team. You mentioned earlier that by week eight, they're not really young anymore. But this is a big game for them, you know, going against a 7-0 and team. And you don't want to get down early if you're a young team. They go in the middle of the second quarter, up 12-8. That gives them a lot of confidence, and I think that's enough to get them going for the rest of the game. Lorraine's kickoff brought to you by EcoTree Services. Complete tree care is more than removing problem trees. Learn more online at ecotreeservices.com. Another kick that's heading towards that far sideline, and again, it just simply goes out of bounds. I almost wonder if Dave McFarland has seen something on film, though, where he says, you know what, we're not going to let these guys break one or bust one on a kickoff return just 
Yeah. Let's give it to him at the 35. But you know what? If I were Shaq Washington, I'd just make them kick it again. If I think that I have an outstanding kickoff return team, you don't have to take the ball here at the 35. You can get that five-yard penalty and make them kick it again. You know, when I had a great returner, um, I remember one game, they they were doing that. We made them kick it three times in a row until they finally kicked it to him, and he <laughs> took it back for a touchdown. Why, you stubborn guy, you. <laughs> <laughs> kick it again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we'll take the penalty. Push it back. <laughs> First and ten, Maple Heights. That's a great story. At their own 35-yard line. Dial looks left, throws wide open field, and look out to the 50. Tripped oh. up at the 45-yard line. Bernard Bates. That's a touchdown-saving tackle right there. Bates tripped up at the 45, and I mean by the shoe top. Yeah. Literally the shoe top because yep. he had to pick it up off the 45-yard line after the play there. So. <laughs> Uh, great, great call there by by Coach Washington because he was wide open in space. There was there was no Lorraine defender within about ten yards of him when he caught that screen. First down and ten, Maple Heights at the 45 of Lorraine High. Dial fake handoff, hanging it deep down the left side. Has a receiver touchdown Mustangs. Dial with the long pass down the field to Fox. Devon Fox, the six-foot senior, their big play guy, and they hook up there from 45 yards out, and Maple Heights right back in front, 14 to 12. The Mustangs regain the advantage. And he may have great speed, but it wasn't his speed that got him open there. I think it was the play action in the backfield. The cornerback bit, thinking it was a run, and Fox was, there was nobody within 25 yards of him. He was just like, I better catch this because it's a touchdown. And that's a great throw by Dial it into was. the wind. Yep. Didn't make him break stride. And, and he's been impressive, too, with the uh, with the work with the ball on the fakes there because he had the earlier one where we thought he was right. running. And now Holloway on the run going for two, and Holloway brings it in for the two-point conversion. So Maple Heights is now two for two on the two-point conversion chart, and they lead it by a score of 16 to 12. We'll take a timeout. We've got more to come from Maple Heights. Mustangs have regained the lead over Lorraine High in our Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash on AM 930, WEOL, and Adam Online. At WEOL.com. Opportunities present themselves every day. Opportunities that move us forward. Opportunities to serve part-time in your community while continuing their full-time careers or education to help keep our nation safe at home and around the globe. Explore your opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. On the kickoff return for Lorraine High, Dower, boy, he slams into a couple of guys out there and just Bulls his way out over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Man, that was a gritty kickoff return right it there. It was. He got an extra eight yards just on his own willpower there. And Lorraine has had great field position after kickoffs. Back at midfield again. Titans have it now trailing 16 to 12. First down and 10. Lorraine at their own 47-yard line. Jordan Jackson up under center. Actually, that's not Jackson. They pitch it right. Chavis was going to throw it. Now he takes it, brings it back, gets it to the 50, to the 45, and Savon Chavis all the way down to the Mustang 42-yard line. So Lorraine High, again, running a little bit of trickery right there as it was Chavis. It looked like he was going to throw the ball, pulled it back, and Savon runs it all the way down to the Maple Heights 41-yard line. First down and 10. Titans now trailing 16 to 12. Ball at the left hash mark. Jackson inside handoff and down to about the 39 yard line. Dalen Dower, gain of three. But what were no gains earlier in the ball game, Rob, are now two, three, four yard gains. Yeah, and that that's if you, if you're a team that wants to. Um, use your physicality. It is something that wears on the defense as the game goes on. Jackson, fake handoff, rolling left, breaks a tackle. Jordan to about the 36 as he skips out of bounds into that Titan bench area. So a little bit of play action as they try to keep that Mustang defense off balance. Again, Maple Heights coming into tonight 
extraordinarily stingy. Less than seven points per game. Now Lorraine has scored two touchdowns here in the first half. They trail it 16 to 12. 8.36 to go here in quarter number two. Lorraine going left to right along your radio dial. Ball at the left hash mark. And they will now put four receivers to the right. To the wide side of the field, there are four receivers. Jackson barking out the play call. We'll talk about that in a moment as Jackson awaits the snap. Jordan now gets the five-second Signal from the back judge rolling to the right. Jackson tries to skip outside. He has nowhere to go, and he got thrown down at the 40-yard line. But, Rob, what I wanted to say there was that Dave McFarland is so well-known for letting his quarterbacks call the plays. He's, he's not signaling plays in. He gives his quarterbacks the freedom to call the plays on their own on the field. Yeah, and, he, and throughout the week, he's coached the quarterback up on – what he sees and what he wants. So it's not like the quarterback is freewheeling it out there. He knows what Coach McFarland wants, and I'm sure if he gives them a certain formation, he tells them what to look for from the defense, what to call from there. So, for, for example, right here, I'm sure Dave called the empty formation, so there's only the quarterback back with five receivers. Now the quarterback has some choices what to call. Yep, three receivers to the left, two to the right. Fourth down play, fourth and nine. Jackson rolling left, throwing, and it's complete down to the 25. Spinning to the 20, breaking the tackle, Lighty. He's to the 15, he's to the 10, to the 5, and Tyshawn is in for the touchdown. Oh, an electrifying play by Tyshawn Lighty. The Titans convert on a fourth and nine. And Jackson hooks up with Lighty from 40 yards out. And Lorraine regains the lead, 18-16. You know, that's the second time that he's um, sprinted out to the left, which is difficult for right-handed quarterbacks, but to put the ball right on the money. And Lighty was wide open, but not for a touchdown. He had to do a lot of work to get into the end zone after he caught the ball. How about the athleticism of Tyshawn Lighty? And a great job there by Zach Evans to run his route correctly that pulled the safety back because you had to respect him and then blocking after the play to help spring Lighty there. That's great play design and great execution by the Titans. Well, we got a great one unfolding here at Maple Heights as the Titans regain the lead, 18-16, 7.29 to go here in the second quarter of play. Lorraine going for two. Quick throw over the middle, and it's knocked down. They ran a direct snap to Dalen Dower, and then Dower tried to throw it to the middle of the end zone to Evans, and the pass knocked down at the goal line. So the two-point conversion is no good. Boy, these are going to start to add up as Lorraine's lead is 18-16 with 7.29 to go here in the second quarter of play. We'll keep it right here. Of course, that last touchdown adds another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop in our Touchdowns to Tackle Hunger campaign. Jamie's Carpet Shop in Amherst, Elyria, and Sandusky. Rob Clerico, how about Lorraine tonight? on fourth down conversion plays. Yeah, and, and it's been from a lot of different places on the field. And there are some coaches throughout the country that never punt. That's just their philosophy. Even if they're on their own five-yard line, they won't punt. They've done some statistical analysis, and it's, it's better to let the other team get the ball even five yards from the end zone than to punt it to them. So they'd rather use all four of their downs. And it looks like Coach McFarland's going with that philosophy tonight. I'd, I'd like to see how far this philosophy will extend. I want to see a fourth down on his own 20 and see what Coach McFarland's going to do. But they have played very aggressively on offense. Between going for it on fourth down, we've seen halfback passes, double passes, um, double moves. We've seen a little bit of everything out of this offense, and I think that, it, that shows how important this game is. And there's a kickoff angling towards the far sideline. What do you know? He's really accurate. He, he always hits it on the sideline right at the 20-yard line. And it bounces out of bound. Mustangs will have it at the 35. Coach, Coach and I are, are on the same wavelength because, yes, it's, it's very accurate down there. And then yeah. you also mentioned that the, the attempted halfback pass there on the previous job. Yeah. That was a good job. Uh, by, not, by not Chavis to, to not throw right. it because you see they run that play a lot of guys this is my chance right. I'm going to throw a touchdown they'll throw an ill-advised pass right. and he did a good job of pulling it down and, and turning it into something so Lorraine High has regained the lead 18-16 Titans 7.29 to go here in the first half of play that 
kickoff that sailed out of bounds. Brought to you by EcoTree Services. Make EcoTree Services your complete tree care company. Their second generation arborists have roots dating back to 1964. First down in 10. Maple Heights at their own 35. Dial, draw play, Ramsey. Ramsey, 40, 45, 50. Breaks a tackle, 45, 40, and brought down from behind at the 35-yard line. Boy, there is some explosiveness on both sides tonight. <laughs> this is fun to watch. Wow. First down and 10. Maple Heights going without a huddle. They are at the Lorraine High 37-yard line. First down and 10. Titans leading by a score of 18 to 16. Dial. Fake handoff, and he spun down at the 40-yard line. Cairo Smith with a nice play. I think, I don't want to jinx anything. I was just about to alert our board off. But uh, we'll, we'll keep it the way we're doing it here for a short time. In the meantime, loss of three on the play. Maple Heights has a second down and 13 at their own 40-yard line. Dial, fake handoff, lobs left in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Bernard Bates. Lorraine, Lorraine's fortunate right there because... Bates had a lot of field in front of him, not a defender anywhere near him. That'll make it second down and, or excuse me, third down. All right, we want to let our board oper operator, Steve Bailey, know we think we have connected uh, via the normal way we transmit. So, uh, Steve, if you want to give it a shot there as Dial rolls to the left. Dial looking deep down the left side as a receiver. 10, 5, and dropped at the four-yard line was Bernard Bates. First down and goal, Maple Heights there at the Titan four-yard line. Another long throw from Dial to Bates. And Bates put a double move down here at the bottom. It looks like the corner, might, they might have been playing some cover too where the corner has some underneath coverage. And so he let the receiver go on that double move and was waiting for help over the top from the safety, which never arrived. First and goal, Maple Heights at the four-yard line of Lorraine. Dial heading to the left. Dial knocked out of bounds at about the four. I'm telling you what, there has been some hitting here tonight. Dalen Dower lowered the lumber right there on Dial. He dialed up a big hit on Dial right there. Yes, he did. You like that one, Rob. I, Come on. I am such not a fan of puns, but I will <laughs> let you do what you do. Oh, you could never work with Bull Bartz. <laughs> you'd, go, you'd go out of your mind working with Bull Bartz. Second and three, or second and goal from the three. Dial under a rush, and he's dropped back at the 14-yard line. Oh, the big-time rush came from Lorraine High. And now it's third and goal from the 14. We're under six minutes to go here in the first half of play. Jared, are we good? Steve Bailey says we're good. I think we're all hooked up the way we normally are. We actually may get Cahill down on the sideline before the <laughs> night is over. Well, again, I can't thank Jared enough. He has been back there working feverishly trying yep. to get this thing connected the way it normally is. Third and goal, Maple Heights. Dial looking, lobbing it back corner of the end zone, and it is... Out of bounds. Ooh. I think the catch was made, actually, but they couldn't get a foot in bounds, and that'll set up a fourth down and goal from the 14. Lorraine has had some great pass rushes these last couple plays, and that pass was on the money. I think that he just failed to get one foot in, but a great pass, a great catch. So here we go, fourth down play. Let's see what Maple can dial up right here. Ouch. Come on, give me one more. <laughs> Fourth and goal. Mustangs are at the 12 of Lorraine High. Titans clinging to an 18-16 lead. Five receiver set. Three to the right, two to the left. Dial back to pass. Here comes the rush. He eludes it. Now the rush comes again, and he simply threw it into the Mustang bench. And there will be a flag. There wasn't anybody near that football. Of course, it was fourth down and goal. Dial said, well, I'm just going to heave it over here. Big time defensive stand there by Lorraine. So the flag. Now, Rob, that's interesting. You're, you're the head coach. You know the rule book better than me. So if you decline. It's a loss of down. 
so you can take it and still get the loss of down. There you go. Okay, so you don't have to get the ball to 12-yard line then is what I'm right. saying. Okay. All right, so it's – wow. So they will spot it at the 35-yard line. Well, if he had been sacked, it would have been close would have been to close. there so that, anyway. That's the purpose of the penalty is let's put it to about where you would have been if you would have taken the sack. But I, we talked about my key to the game – pay myself on the back a little bit was defensive backs tackling and that should have been a touchdown but that safety came from the middle of the field and made that tackle inside the five and it ended up keeping points off the board that's a great point jackson rolling left throwing incomplete at the 40 yard line as he was looking for dalen dower that'll make it second down and 10 5 14 to go first half of play Lorraine High leading Maple Heights by a score of 18 to 16. What an entertaining two quarters of football we've had at Maple Heights Stadium. And still five minutes to go in quarter number two. Titans at their own 35-yard line. So much has happened in this game. I keep looking up. I can't believe there's five minutes still to go in the half. <laughs> Lorraine going left to right. Jackson will take the snap out of that pistol formation at the right hash mark. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Jackson, quick hit to the left, complete Dalen Dower, 40-45, lowered the shoulder and rolled forward to about the 48-yard line. I don't know how, Rob, you can coach toughness, but Lorraine High has now become a tough, physical, as you say, and Dave says, football team. Right, but that just follows Dave McFarland wherever he's coached. I've, I've seen his teams play at three different schools, and it's the same everywhere he goes. Toughness. First down play, the handoff, Cairo Smith. Smith right in front of that Lorraine High bench, shoved out of bounds into the Titan bench. Let's see where they spot it. Play started at the Lorraine 48-yard line. They'll put him right on the fifth, well, maybe the 49. Gain of one, will make it second down and nine. Again, can't thank Jared Kozar enough, and also I guess some IT folks here at Maple Heights got involved as well. So everybody was feverishly working behind the scenes to uh, get us back to where we normally are as far as our broadcast quality is concerned. We appreciate it very much. Joe Bach, WLCS TV 20, thanks to you as well. Inside handoff, Dalen Dower, and Dower slices his way down to the Maple Heights 42-yard line. It'll be very close to the first down. I think he got it. Yep, first down in 10, Lorraine High. 4.46 to go, second quarter of play. Titans with a two-point lead, 18-16. Downs here in the second quarter of play. Ball still at that left hash mark as Jordan Jackson awaits the snap. Jackson, a little reverse play. Here comes Lighty around the right corner. Lighty looking for some room to the 40, 35, 30. Cairo Smith there. He made two blocks on two different defenders to really spring that, or else it wasn't going to go for very much. First down and 10. Lorraine at the Maple 25-yard line. Inside handoff. Not much there that time. As brought down on the play, Savon Chavis. But again, that'll just keep that defense honest. You slam it up in right. there once in a while, and Maple Heights has to look for that play. And just to point out what you said before, that didn't seem to go for much, but it was about two, about two yards, and before that was zero yards. Second down and eight. Ball now at the right hash mark. Three receivers left, the wide side of the field. Jackson rolling to the left. A little bit of a hippity hop. Now he's going to head to the far sideline. Got to the 20, skips out of bounds. At about the 17-yard line. I love the... At the 18-yard line. Titans need to get to the 15. They've been going for it on fourth all night long, so that doesn't matter. But, hey, they got the first down there anyway as Dower slams the right side. And, again, now that Lorraine offensive line, Addis, the freshman center, Lucas and Tarpley at guards, Alzir and Thomas, the tackles, they're getting push. 
First down and 10. back to how we usually do the game on the air. Rob will have to talk about this over dinner sometime. <laughs> so the Mustangs have it first down in 10. And on the handoff, Ramsey out to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. Boy, big turnover there for Lorraine High as Jackson gets picked off in the end zone. And now Maple Heights gets the ball back with 140 to go here in the first half of play. Lorraine still in the lead. It's an 18-16 ball game. Titans lead it. Dial awaits the snap. Dial under a rush, steps up, throws. Caught, cat, caught at about the 28-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down. We'll set up third down and one. Cahill, you're getting your steps in tonight. I will say that, young man. I mean, it's not like I didn't all day anyway. <laughs> Tim is apparently under the impression I need more exercise. <laughs> We had sent him down there. We had good thoughts in mind. Dial, back to pass. Hooks, throws, and oh, what a catch. My goodness, upended at the 50-yard line after making that great reception, Bernard Bates. How about the concentration yeah. of Bates right there? And Bates went high for the ball. Uh, Devontae Jackson went low to tackle him and almost missed the tackle. I think that was close to going the distance. So Maple has it, first down and 10 at the Titan 49-yard line. 18-16, Lorraine leads it. Quick throw to the left, complete, and inside the 40 and dropped at the 36-yard line is Devon Fox for Maple Heights. Again, Fox is a big-time player. So is Bates. I mean, that's a lethal wide receiver combo for Maple Heights. And now the Mustangs, I believe, take a timeout. They do. I think we all need to catch our breath for a moment. <laughs> I want to remind you tonight's Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic, offering the latest technology for joint replacement surgery in Lorain County. 
Call 440-204-7800 for your appointment. And now we've got the Lorraine High staff coming over right in front of the Maple Heights bench. There may have been a player shaken up for Lorraine High. Again, the Mustang players are right in front of the Titan player that's down. Could be a cramping situation. Not sure what it is, but whoever is down for Lorraine High, and now he's up, Dalen Dower. Appears to be just fine as he's going to trot over to the Titan bench. So let's set it for you. 40 seconds to go, second quarter of play. Maple Heights at the Lorraine High 37-yard line. Titans hanging on to a two-point lead, 18-16. Dower comes off the field, and the Mustangs set their offense. Ball at the left hash mark, four receivers set, two right, the wide side of the field, two left, the short side. Dial gets the snap. Devin looking left, hangs a beauty down the left side, and there's a flag on the play as Tyshawn Lighty got tangled up with the intended receiver, and I think we're going to have a pass interference call. Well, you would think those guys in the spring are going to be running track against each other. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, those two guys were just sprinting down that near sideline. Tyshawn, I think, had a bit of a shove in there. And they'll move the ball to the 27-yard line. First down and 10 for Maple Heights. 31 seconds to go. Keep in mind, Lorraine kept them out on the last sequence when Maple had a fourth and goal at the 12. Dial rolling to the right. Dial under a rush. Dial just throws it down the field as he got hit as he threw the football. It will fall incomplete. We'll set up a second down and 10. We're down to 25 seconds to go. Jalen Cheers, outside linebacker for Lorraine, applying the heat. Oh, that finally, they, he just threw the flag just now. I wonder, there was not a receiver anywhere near where he threw the ball. I couldn't believe they didn't call grounding again, and he just threw the penalty about... 35 to 40 seconds after the play was over. That's a, that's a very late call. I, I, I mean, he's, he's out of the tackle box. We were almost to halftime. That's, that's an NFL rule. Ah, okay. <laughs> that, that does all, I think we go through that every year, and I always forget because it just seems like something that is That we that see all logical. the time. Yeah. Right. So the ball goes back now to the 40-yard line. And with 25 seconds to go, all of a sudden, Maple Heights as a long way to venture. Keep in mind, they also have guys that can cover 40 yards in right. a blink. Right. 40 yards in about 4-5, <laughs> to be exact. Well, maybe not with pads. Second down play from the 40-yard line. Ball at the right hash mark as Dial awaits the snap. And now I think we may have delay of game because it's the back judge who threw the flag, and indeed they're going to push him back another five yards. I thought they might have get a timeout from Lorraine because it looked like they were a little confused about what their secondary coverage was going to be. I'm really surprised that they only had one safety deep this late in the half with 40 yards to go. So we'll see if they get two safeties back there now. Again at the half, our Gallon Takis Boys and Alt Halftime Show coming up at the intermission. Let's see if that goes smoothly. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? <laughs> Ball at the 45-yard line. Dial looking, throwing over the middle, and it's caught at the 30, heading to the sideline, 25, 20, and shut down at about the 19-yard line. I believe that was Fox, and Maple Heights will take a timeout with the ball at the 19. And I want to say for Maple Heights, it was Bates? Bates, yep. Got to love those maroon numbers yeah, on black tough. jerseys they're tough. at the and far then, side of the field. And we also have we have a, a, another Lorraine player that looks like down on the far side of the field. Can't quite tell who it is, though. Right. Well, Lorraine High needs to make two plays right here, I would say. Wouldn't you, Rob, at 12 seconds? So. Yes. Ball will be at the 19-yard line. Boy, this has been a good one here at Maple Heights. Hope you've enjoyed it. Again, our Gridiron Clash tonight brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. Ohio's number one orthopedic care is here for you in Lorain County. Call 440-204-7800 for your appointment. Now the Lorain player 
is helped off. But Maple did take a timeout. Scoreboard shows they have one remaining. So they could try something over the middle. Yeah. With one timeout still at their disposal. Let's see what Shaq Washington, first-year head coach at Maple Heights, decides to go with here. First down play. Or excuse me, third down play. Third down play at the 19-yard line. Dial, draw play, Ramsey, all sorts of room. 10-5 touchdown. What a great play call. Oh, what a phenomenal play call. Ramsey brings it in from 19 yards out with six seconds to go in the half. And Maple Heights regains the lead. It's 22 to 18 Mustangs. That was a phenomenal play call. It was a phenomenal play call. Big drive uh, in response to that turnover in the end zone. What a difference the score is between Lorraine scoring their touchdown down at one end, but that getting taken away and Maple Heights going down and scoring this one. Yep. About five touchdowns here in quarter number two. And now Maple going for two. That's Holloway. Holloway bounces outside, and he's in for the two-point conversion. With the speed of Maple Heights. Holloway with the two-point run. And Maple Heights now leads this one by a score of 24 to 18. Back and forth we go. But as you said, Rob, that was a Huge swing right there. Lorraine High could have gone up by two scores. Instead, the turnover for the Titans and Maple Heights drives 80 yards and regains the advantage. And, of course, that touchdown means another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop. Jamie's Carpet Shop on Route 113 in Amherst. They're also in Elyria and Sandusky. Tim Elkhorn along with Rob Clerico, Adam Cahill, we think Adam's going to be on that sideline during the second half of play. Everything seems to be holding firm right now. Yeah. We have not had a chance to see that green light go on yet. <laughs> We're looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorraine High now trailing 24-18. to 18, But, again, this is where those missed extra points for Lorraine High are starting to add up. Right. Because they're down by six. where Maple is three for three on two-point conversions. Lorraine High has yet to convert after a touchdown, hence a six-point lead right. for the Mustangs. This kickoff brought to you by EcoTree Services, your complete tree care company. For 24-hour emergency service or online, visit ecotreeservices.com. And we've got a bouncing kick. And Lorraine High saying they've got it. Boy, if Maple had it, they would get one more shot. Right. But Lorraine High did come up with it at the 35-yard line. Well, I love that call right there. Hey, if we can jump on that thing, we'll right. take one heave to with, the end zone. With the receivers that they have, they, they have a, a, a shot at getting a touchdown from the 35-yard line. So Lorraine High will have it at their own 35. Only two ticks remaining here in the second quarter of play. And what has been a wild and entertaining football game here at Maple Heights, 24-18. Maple Heights leading Lorraine High. Lorraine came into Maple Heights with a record of 4-3. and three. Maple Heights 7-0 and oh under first-year head coach and former Maple Heights star Shaq Washington. What a great player he was for the Mustangs. Led them to the Division II state championship back in 2010. Went on to Cincinnati, became the Bearcats' all-time leading receiver. Jordan Jackson's going to come up under center, take a knee. And that's going to do it for the first half of play. Boy, oh, just another boring night here on AM 930 WEOL. What can we tell you? We are at the intermission here at Maple Heights Stadium, an entertaining football game to say the very least. And at the half, Maple Heights leading Lorraine High by a score of 24 to 18. Every year, the Salvation Army serves nearly 30 million people in need. That's one person every second. So by the time you've finished watching this, 30 more lives will have been changed for good. All thanks to your donations. Thank you.
I began in third grade, eight years old, and I was able to learn the chest compressions and the breaths, and I absolutely believe that anyone out in the public can easily learn. We got a page for an unresponsive two-month-old, and when I got the first glimpse of the two-month-old, he was blue. We didn't even get to go inside, I just jumped in the back and we started CPR, continuing CPR, and you were able to see the color start to come back, and then we were able to actually get his heart rate back. It was a pretty moving part in the story that we were able to save a two-month-old's life. My community is why. For the thousands of wounded warriors returning from battle, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program, a unique program that helps wounded warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. The Warriors to Work program also works with employers to find the right job for the right warrior. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home, the brave. So Maple Heights will be going left to right along your radio dial here in the second half of play. They got a special shout out to uh, send out tonight. My cousin-in-law, Big Ed. Big Ed's listening back in Lorain, Ohio tonight. I'm not sure why Big Ed didn't make the trip over to the east side. Although I've heard that, you know, Gary and the Enablers are playing out tonight. So, <laughs> you know, Big Ed, he, he just couldn't leave the band. He just couldn't leave the band tonight. So, uh, Big Ed, have a good gig. <laughs> and my buddy Joe, listening down in Medina tonight. Great to have Joe dialed in as well. So, uh, wherever you may be listening tonight, hope you're enjoying it on AM 930 WEOL or on the mobile app or online at WEOL.com. It has been entertaining, to say the very least. So, here we go, Lorraine in their traveling whites, the white shirts with the dark blue letters and numbers and the dark blue pants, silver helmets, and Maple Heights. Boy, we love these uniforms. Black shirts, black pants with maroon letters and numbers and the white trim. And there's a bouncing kick batted by one of the up men and Maple Heights able to fall on it at the 47 yard line. Boy, that was a dangerous play. And yet, now Maple Heights with great field position. They actually spotted at the 46, but my goodness, they've got a very short field to work with on their first drive here in the second half of play. And Lorraine's been aggressive throughout the game and all their calls. Why not come out in the second half with an onside kick? Well, they got batted down by the Mustangs, and now they have it at their own 46, first down and 10. Again, Devin Dial, 5'8 senior, is their quarterback as Dial will operate out of that pistol formation. Dial awaits the snap. He's standing at about the 41-yard line. Scans that Lorraine high defense. Play action, looks, throws, complete to the midfield stripe. Turning the corner, down the left side, to the 35, to the 30. Cutting to the middle of the field. 25, 20, 15, 10, touchdown! One play for Maple Heights to score here in the third quarter of play. And I believe that was Fox. It was Devon Fox. It takes Maple Heights one play to extend the lead to 30 to 18 here in the third quarter of play. And it was just a simple hitch. That's all it was, just a, just a six yard hitch. Cornerback misses the tackle and then you have a great athlete in space. So Fox with the 48 yard, or excuse me, 54, 54 yard reception from Devin Dial. And now Lorraine will have their work cut out for them. Down by 12 at 30 to 18. Holloway going for two, hit in the backfield, breaks that tackle, but not another, and he's dropped at about the six yard line. So Lorraine for the first time tonight stops a two point conversion from Maple Heights, so the score remains 30 to 18. Big series here for the Titans. Huge. And just going back, one more thing from that, from the last one. We talked about how important it was for the defensive backs of Lorraine to tackle. A missed tackle leads to a long touchdown. So here they come. Um, they've been very aggressive all game long on offense. Seems like they may have exhausted all the trick plays they have in their playbook, but maybe it goes deeper than either one of us thinks. 
30 to 18 ball game. Maple Heights now leading by 12. That last touchdown means another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop and our touchdowns to tackle hunger. Lorraine County's oldest full service flooring store. Visit Jamie's in Amherst, Elyria, and Sandusky. By the way, we heard from Adam down on that Lorraine High sideline. Sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance. Stewart Appliance, a beautiful kitchen, doesn't have to cost a lot. Ask about the GE Cafe Update Your Kitchen program at Stewart's. They're on Cleveland Street in Elyria. So the Titans give up a touchdown on the very first play of the third quarter. It's now a 30 to 18 ball game as Maple Heights will kick off. Titans here in quarter number three will be going right to left. Line drive kick, bounce at about the 25 and picked up there to the 30, 35, 40. Dalen Dower to the 45 and spinning to the 50 and he gets to Maple Heights territory and finally ridden down at the Mustang 46 yard line. There's that toughness, that physicality that we talk about with Lorraine High. Yeah, he never goes down on the first hit and he uh, introduced us to some spin moves that time. Usually he's just bowling people over. That time he spun off a couple of uh, tackles. Let's get another Stewart Appliance sideline update with Adam. Well, guys, something you might have missed up there because it is quite, kind of far away. Uh, Tyshawn Lady actually ended up with the ball on that because during one of Dower's spin moves, he got popped and that ball came loose. Good job by Lady to be right there and continue to advance it for a couple of yards on the kickoff there. All right, good catch, Adam. So Lady with the heads up play and Lorraine High has it first down at the 46. Little reverse play. Here comes Lady, 45 40. He has room middle of the field, 35 to the 30, breaks a tackle, 25 20, and finally ridden down at the 20 yard line. Tyshawn Lighty again, he is electrifying every time he touches the football. Adam Sideline Report brought to you by Stewart Appliance. Save up to $1,200 via online or mail-in rebate on select GE profile appliances at Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. First down and 10 at the 20. Lorraine High in the red zone. Inside handoff, Javis. Javis kind of picking his way, and then he finally got stood up at about the 19. There just wasn't anything there. That was great pursuit by Maple Heights. It was, and uh, it's been like that for the run game most most of this game. But um, going back to that, Coach McFarland found another trick play in his in his arsenal. So what a great variety of offense we've seen from Lorraine tonight. Second and nine from the 19. They give it to Dower and Dower got to about the 17 yard line. We'll set up third down and seven. Early stages of the third quarter. Lorraine now trailing by 12. 30 to 18. Maple Heights with the lead. And then Maple Heights offense. We've talked about its explosiveness. They came into tonight averaging 44 points per game. Third down play, ball at the left hash mark. Jackson pitches it behind him. Dower, 15, 10, 5. Dower's in for the touchdown. Boy, a little pitch play to yep. Jalen Dower, and he did the rest of the work. An 18-yard gallop, and Lorraine answers right back. The Dower touchdown makes it a 30-24 ball game. A little triple option look from... Uh from Lorraine and you know a few years ago that's that's what they were exclusively when Dave first started at Lorraine so again diving into the deep recesses of his playbook pulls out something else we haven't seen the entire game gets down there inside the 10 calls the triple option and they pitch it for the touchdown. Dalen Dower his eighth touchdown of the year and here comes Mark Rodriguez on okay. to attempt the extra point. So Lorraine High now back to within six. Says, all right, we'll send Rodriguez back out. He missed one earlier. High snap. They get it down. Kick is up, and it is good. So Rodriguez booms that one through, and it's now a 30-25 ball game. Boy, great resilience shown by the Titans as Maple Heights scored on the first play of the third quarter. Lorraine says we'll answer that. Came right back. And Dalen Dower with the 18-yard gallop to pay dirt. And the extra point is good. Maple Heights now with a five-point lead at 32-25. And, of course, that touchdown by Dalen Dower, another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop, Lorraine County's oldest full-service flooring store. Visit Jamie's in Amherst, Elyria, and Sandusky. We're raising some money tonight we for Second Harvest absolutely. Food Bank. Absolutely. We've got 80 bucks in the coffers courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop. With well, that Berea Mid-Park Avon Lake game tomorrow night, 
That's that's going to be a lot of money raised for Second Harvest Food Bank, and that's a cool thing. Going to have to sell some carpet. Huge, huge thank you to Chris Zeitler and everybody at Jamie's Carpet Shop for the touchdowns to tackle hunger campaign for the second year in a row. So Lorraine High will now kick off. They're back to within five. It's a 30 to 25 ball game. 10-13 to go here in the third quarter of play. Been a fun one to call on AM 930 WEOL. The enablers, they are out on the road tonight. <laughs> you, you, were, you were right. Oh, yeah, they have a game. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> Ball teed up at the 40. Kickoff brought to you by Ecotree Services. Another bouncing short kick, and it's swallowed up at the 45-yard line by Bernard Bates for Maple Heights. That band is always playing. <laughs> always playing. They're like Springsteen. They go to 2, 3 in the morning. Never stops. Maple Heights has it. First down and 10 at their own 45-yard line. 10-11 to go, third quarter. It has been a fun game here at Maple Heights. Mustangs leading 30-25 to as they look to stay unbeaten. A perfect 7-0 on the year. Drive starts at the 45-yard line. Devin Dial in that pistol formation. Lorraine showing blitz. Here they come. Inside handoff, and it didn't go anywhere. Boy, the blitz came, and the Titans swallowed up Ramsey for a loss of two, maybe three. Again, that Lorraine defense. Isaiah McDowell is the nose guard. Malik McCall, Nate Melendez are the defensive ends. Outside linebackers, Jalen Cheers and Zach Evans. Inside backers, Kelvin Torres and Cairo Smith. Cameron Davis and Devontae Jackson are the corners. Sabon Chavis and Tyshawn Lighty are the safeties. Second down play, low snap. Dial, looks, throws, complete down to the 45-yard line. To the 40, 35, 30, the race is on. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Maple Heights. Dante Abrams. And Maple Heights is now two for two here in the third quarter of play. And the lead is back to 11 at 36 to 25 with 9.28 to go here in quarter number three. And Lorraine's defense has become a little more aggressive in the second half. In the first half, they alternated between having one deep safety and two deep safeties. They've come out in the second half with no deep safeties. And that's one of the things that's helping Maple Heights be able to get these big plays because once you get a uh, receiver into the secondary, there's no safety help to make that tackle. Dante Abrams with his fifth touchdown of the year. Maple Heights going for due. Devin dialed to the right. Ooh, he took a big time hit and he got flung down back at the seven yard line. So it's now a 36 25 ball game. We'll take a timeout. 9.28 to go, third quarter. Titans down 11 in our Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash on AM 930 WEOL. On your phone with the mobile app. Rob, we're online at WEOL.com. I started mentoring in my mentee, Dontre, four years ago. I always thought about doing it. It always seemed like a good idea. We were both nervous when we first met, but we kind of, everything kind of fell into place. Mentoring is important to anyone that's pretty fortunate in life to have a little bit of time to pass on that knowledge. Etienne is a very close friend. I look at him as a brother and a father figure. He taught me just focus on the big picture because I would like to give back just like Etienne gave back to me. Be someone who matters to someone who matters. 36-25, Maple Heights with an 11-point lead. 9.28 to go, third quarter of play. Tim Elkhorn, along with Rob Clerico, Adam Cahill down on that sideline. We'll get an update from Adam after this kickoff. Kickoff brought to you by Ecotree Services. Call for 24-hour emergency service or online. Visit ecotreeservices.com. Bouncing kick, Dalen Dower. 35-40-45, lowers that shoulder. And... Barrels his way out to about the 47-yard line. All right, let's check in with Adam on that Titan sideline. Something tells me uh, they're raring to go. They haven't folded yet. They, uh, there's still some fight in them at, at this football game that's broken out at a track meet, Tim. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they, they, they've done a good job uh, for the most part uh, so far answering when Maple Heights has scored long plays. We'll see if they continue to do it. But at some point, you're going to have to stop them. And as Rob mentioned, they're getting more aggressive. This happened so far. It's burned them on the defensive end. Yeah, they start this drive at their own 48. First down and 10. Inside handoff, Cairo Smith. That didn't go anywhere. Cairo got stood up. 
No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. Adam sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance, the name brands you trust. Free delivery, financing, and they service what they sell. Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. Titans with a second down and 10 at their own 47, trailing 36-25. Another inside handoff. That's Savon Chavis. Chavis just muscling his way to the 45 of Maple Heights before he got thrown back. We'll make it a third down and short for Lorraine High. And again, they have not been bashful about going for it on fourth down here tonight. So you would think they're in four down territory. Ball spotted at the 46 yard line. So it's third down and about four. Jordan Jackson, inside handoff. Boy, Chavis got stood up behind the line of scrimmage. And I think Lorraine High. Well, let's see where they spot that football. I was going to say it's looking like a fourth and five, but they actually gave him some progress back to the line of scrimmage. Wow, that's a nice spot, but... Dave McFarland says, no thinking about it. We're going for it. Fourth down and four at the 46-yard line. They've converted on several big fourth down plays here tonight. Jackson in that pistol formation. Ball to right hash mark. Fourth and four at the 46. 7.40 to go. Back judge looking at his watch. Jordan Jackson looking at that back judge saying, where's the five second? Well, he takes the snap. Jackson rolling right short side of the field. Hemmed in. Nowhere to go. Did he get to the first down? I think he did. Boy, it'll be very close. It was the short side of the field, and there were a whole bunch of bodies over there. Did Jordan Jackson find the room to maneuver himself down to that first down marker? Boy, let's see where they spot that football. Oh, yeah. He got it. Boy, Rob, I didn't think he had the room over there on the it, far it side. It looked like he was hemmed in, and then all of a sudden, he found the, the smallest little alleyway right along the sidelines to get there. But you got to love the aggressiveness out of the Lorraine football team. First and 10, Lorraine. Wow, Jackson picks his way right to that first down marker at the Mustang 42. Now Jackson rolling wide left. Looks, throws. Oh, what a hit at the 30-yard line. A ball knocked away from Tyshawn Lighty. Oh, my goodness. The boom got lowered on Tyshawn. The ball was right on the mark by Jordan Jackson. And Tyshawn is a little wobbly as he heads back to that Titan huddle. That was a big time hit. Antoine Holloway, a 5'9 senior. Sets up second down and 10. I think Tyshawn saying, Jordan, I know you have the ability to make the play call. Don't call that one again. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Pitch play to the left. Savant Chavis. Chavis hit in the backfield and driven down at the 44-yard line. Boy, Maple Heights read that play very, very well. Again, these numbers are just impossible to pick up. Might have been pace. Looks like it was a double digit out there, which would be 14, maybe the linebacker, or 16, the safety. In dark maroon numbers on a black jersey. Third down, 13. Lorraine at the 45-yard line of Maple Heights. They need to get to the Mustang 32. 6.35 in the clock running here in quarter number three. Lorraine down by 11, 36-25. Jackson gets the snap, rolling right. Throw, sliding catch. Was it made? Ooh. Yes, nice sliding catch at the 34-yard line. About two yards shy of the first down. But a very makeable fourth down here for Lorraine High. Trying to see who caught that for Lorraine High. Not sure who that was, but it's fourth down and two at the 34-yard line. So Lorraine again in a fourth down scenario. They quick snap to Dalen Dower and he fights his way to the 32. I think he's got enough. Well, Shaq Washington, Maple Heights coach is saying, no, I don't think he got it. Let's see where they spot it. Maple Heights defensively is saying he doesn't have it. 
And they may bring the chains out. Boy, they direct snapped to Dalen Dower. Dower went left, and he catapulted. And it will absolutely depend upon where that nose of the football is spotted. We've got the official standing right over the football, so I can't see it. Boy, it's close. Let's stretch it out. And the ball goes over to Maple Heights. Dalen Dower did not get the first down. Let's head down to Adam Cahill over on that Lorraine High sideline. Adam, from your vantage point, what would you think of the spot? Uh, I thought that was a pretty good spot. Hard to tell with all those bodies in there, but you know, I was standing right with the yard marker. It, it was a good spot, but from the sideline, it looked like they had it, and then you know, they pulled the chains out there, and they were maybe six inches or so short. So uh, that's a tough call for the officials. I, I will give them credit on that one, which is rare for me to give credit <laughs> to the officials. Well, this is a big, big sequence yeah. right here for Lorraine High. They have not gotten a stop here in the second half. And Maple Heights takes over at their own 32-yard line. Quick hitter to the right, complete to Bates. Bates 35-40, and shoved out into the Mustang bench at the 45-yard line. Cairo Smith with the tackle for Lorraine High. But just, boy, you put the ball in the hands of their playmakers, and they just do the rest of the work. So I, was just, I was just about to say, so many playmakers on the team. You know, every, you, so many of them look the same because they have their dark jerseys. I can't tell which one is which, but they they just they all look fast. First and ten at the 45. Dial lobs to the right. Pass caught at the 50-yard line, and then stepping out of bounds, Bernard Bates. And again, we mentioned this earlier, but if you weren't with us, uh, Shaq Washington, of course, the first-year head coach at Maple Heights, a great star for the Mustangs, went to Cincinnati, became their all-time leading receiver. Think about that for the Bearcat program, and you can see how he has coached up these receivers. For sure. Oh, man, precise routes, great hands. Dial looks, throws over the middle. Great catch made at the 40-yard line by Abrams, and he's dropped right there. But again, kind of that triangle look, looking the ball right into your hands. Yeah. I mean, just perfect. Ball at the 40-yard line of Lorraine High. 5-22 left here in the third quarter. Maple Heights has had two possessions here in the second half, and they've scored on both. They lead it 36-25. You can see why this is a 7-0 football team. And they're on the move. Ball at the right hash mark as Maple Heights goes left to right on your radio dial. And dial hands off, and Ramsey plugged right at the 40-yard line. Boy, that hole closed in a quickly, but closed in a hurry as Cairo Smith came up to make the stop. That'll make it second down and 10. Adams' last sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance for the friendly personal service that keeps customers coming back for over 72 years. Visit Stewart's. They're on Cleveland Street in Elyria. Second and 10 at the 40. Devin Dial awaits the snap. Here comes the blitz. Dial under a rush. Steps up. Throws down the middle, and it's incomplete at the 20-yard line. Well, there was the rush that forced Dial to throw it uncomfortably, and the ball sailed on him. Right. Lorraine is continuing to be aggressive. They're uh, blitzing linebackers on most plays, and again, playing some a lot of man-to-man -man coverage in the defensive secondary. So that that is kind of boomer bust defense, and they've been busted a couple times, and they it's it's benefited them so far in the first two plays of this series. We've got a Maple Heights player down right now, so it gives us time to remind you that tonight's Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic, offering same-day sports injury appointments in Lorain County to get back in the game. Call 440-204-7800. That's 440-204-7800. Hey, don't forget, after the ball game, our Nick Abraham Auto Mall post-game show brought to you by Nick Abraham Buick GMC and Nick Abraham Elyria Ford, the Nick Abraham Auto Mall post-game show. Of course, we'll have our Lorain County Community College Player of the Game, our U.S. Army Team Strength Award, all that and a whole lot more following tonight's ball game. Thursday night, Cleveland Clinic Gridiron Clash. Our normal Cleveland Clinic football Friday coverage starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with the forecast show and then busy night of coverage on the radio and on the mobile app. Radio and Stream 1 features what should be a great one, Berea Mid Park at Avon Lake. Stream 2, Elyria Catholic on the road at Bay. 
You were telling me you like EC's chances in that game tomorrow night. I do, and I got a chance to see uh, EC play against Parma and it, talking to their coach before the game. I'm real impressed with what they're doing over there, so I, I think that's going to be a good game. Stream three tomorrow night, Elyria at Medina in our Medina County matchup. And, of course, the Sandman, Andy Sanzada, on Friday night with all of the scores. Third and ten at the 40-yard line. Huge play for Lorraine High. Dial under a rush, being chased, and he throws from the sideline. I think he had stepped out. He did. Dial had stepped out all the way back at his own 45. The blitz came, and Dial had nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Right, so again, Lorraine's aggressiveness pays off in that series. Looks like they're going to get the ball back on a punt. They really need it down 11 uh, as the third quarter's ticking away. 4.19 to go, 36-25, and Maple will be forced to punt as Dalen Dower will drop back deep for Lorraine High. You know, Gary and the Enablers, they did a remake of Nowhere to Run, Nowhere to Hide by Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. I didn't know that. High snap! Gets over the head of the punter, and now the kick is a line drive caught by Smith! Cairo Smith at the 50, and he takes it back to the 38-yard line. How about the heads-up play of Cairo Smith? The heads-up play of the punter getting the punt off, and then Cairo Smith being able to field it. We've seen a little bit of everything in this game. Wow. The ball sailed over the head of the Maple Heights punter, and as Rob just said, he made a great play to get a kickoff. It was a line drive kick, and give him credit for that just to get it off. Cairo Smith for Lorraine just reached up and grabbed it at the 50. And Smith with a return to the 38-yard line. So Lorraine will start this drive at the 38 of the Mustangs. First down and 10. 4.09 to go. Third quarter of play. They give it to Dalen Dower. Dower with a crease. And Dower got to the 30. He almost broke it. That's a heck of a tackle. One-on-one -on -one in space against Dalen Dower is not... Uh, an easy task. Dower got nine. It'll be second down and one for Lorraine High. Titans down by 11. 340 and the clock running here in the third quarter of play. It's been a fun game here at Maple Heights tonight. Jackson gets the snap. Dower again. Dower to the 25. And he got stonewalled there. Actually, on Dower's last carry, they did give him the first down. So that was a first down and 10 carry. And Dower got about three, three and a half yards. And again, Dave's not going to get away from the game plan right here of trying to kill some clock. Right. They're close to the red zone. Down by 11. 3-10 to go third quarter. Second down and seven. Jackson, hands off, and right up the middle to about the 20, thrown down there. Good push there by the offensive line. Yep. Starting to get their feet under them, their, get underneath their pads. And again, it's four down territory. They put the ball right at the 20 yard line. Lorraine High, facing a third down and three. Jackson in that pistol. Jackson, hands off. Jackson, no, kept it himself. Jackson spun down at the 20. Boy, it didn't fool Maple Heights. He faked that handoff to Dalen Dower. Jordan tried to head outside to the wide side of the field, and he got spun down at the 20. Boy, can Lorraine convert right. another fourth down. Right. Well, the last time they went to a direct snap, I think to, to Dower last time, and it came up a little bit short, so... He's definitely their, their most powerful runner, so I would want to get the ball in his hands in some way. Fourth and two at the 20-yard line. Isaiah McDowell has now checked in for Lorraine High in the backfield. Ball is at the left hash mark, and Dave McFarland says, all right, let's talk it over. Let's take a timeout. Wise timeout right here. 156 to go, third quarter. Lorraine doesn't want to see this opportunity slip away. Fourth down and two at the Maple Heights 20 yard line. Mustangs leading by 11, 36 to 25. All right, Mr. Play Caller, what do you think? 
I always think in crucial parts of the game, you, you think players instead of plays. So you got to think, who is your best player? Who do you want this game to be in the hands of? And I, again, for me, I love the way Dalen Dower runs the ball. If I want two yards, I, I'm going to give it to him every single time because he's just a tough, tough runner. All right, Adam, let's check in with you down on the sideline. Adam Cahill on that uh, Lorraine High sideline tonight. Uh, they've got the momentum right now, but this is a huge fourth down play. Yeah, this is one, Tim, down 11 with less than two minutes left in the third. Uh, you really have to convert this one, and you have to get points out of this drive uh, because of the way Maple Heights has played here in the second half and, and those quick scores that they're so capable of. You need to make sure that you're not getting too far behind, and uh, it's getting late. Well, it looks like perhaps another direct snap to Dalen Dower. No, now Dower I thought he was going to line up in a wing. So will it go to Dower? It will. Dower cuts it back up. Dower to the 15, and he got the first down. Dower had Lady trailing him with an option, perhaps, but Dower said, no, I'm going to keep it myself, cut it back up, and got the first down. Adam's last sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance. A beautiful kitchen doesn't have to cost a lot. Ask about the GE Cafe Update Your Kitchen program at Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. So Lorraine High converts on a fourth down again. First and 10 at the 14 of Maple Heights. They hand it off McDowell, Isaiah McDowell, the big fella slams his way inside the 10. And the bowling ball down to about the nine, maybe the eight yard line. Isaiah McDowell looks like an old time football player, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Just that short squat guy. Low center of gravity. Yep. Love it. Ripped off five yards there. Second down inside the 10 yard line. They give it to McDowell again. McDowell to about the six. We'll set up third down and two. They've got to get to about the four yard line. Well, let's see, they didn't give Isaiah a good spot right there. I think they put him down at the seven. We are under a minute to go here in the third quarter of play. And they did put it at the six. Third down and two at the six yard line. Titans need to get to the four. Now it's Jackson. Hands off, Dower, and we've got a flag flying on the play. Oh boy. And it is illegal procedure against Lorraine. Ooh, that one hurts. So third and two now becomes third and seven. Now, Lorraine, we saw them on their last touchdown go for the extra point. And Mark Rodriguez boomed that one through pretty clean. He did. It looked really good. So you're, that's, a, that's a really good point by you because three points puts you back within a touchdown. So... Yep. So it may open the playbook here a little bit as Lorraine now faces, faces a third and seven. They're back at the 11-yard line. Jackson awaits the snap. Jordan looking left, throwing to the middle. Catch made at the five. And inside the five to the four, maybe the three-yard line, but that should be enough for the first down. That big target, Zach Evans. And, of course, Zach's dad was Jerry Evans, star in the city of Lorraine, just this past spring, was inducted into the Lorraine Sports Hall of Fame. Had an NFL career with the Denver Broncos. Inside handoff, Dalen Dower. It was indeed a first down at the three. And no gain on the play for Dower, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. We got a ball game. We're heading to the fourth, 36-25. Maple Heights by 11. But Lorraine High knocking on the door to make it closer. Fourth quarter follows this time out on our Cleveland Clinic. Gridiron Clash. It's on AM 930 WEOL and Rob Online. At WEOL.com. In an instant, life can change. Hi, I'm veteran J.R. Martinez. If you've been hurt or disabled due to your service, the last thing you need to do is hurry up and wait for a VA claims decision. Make sure you file an electronic, fully developed claim or e-claim for disability compensation on e-benefits. It's the fastest and easiest way to get a claims decision. Learn more at ebenefits.va.gov. E-claims and e-benefits. Online VA claims made simple. Hi, my name is Tyler Strong. I'm 17 years old and I just finished 12th grade at Lorraine High School. I was in the Welding Career Tech Education Program. 
But I'll tell you that welding is very different and very enjoyable. I wound up in uh, welding my senior year and after my first semester and fell in love with it. It's kind of like an art, it's different every day. On a scale of the one to 10, I would give difficulty of program six to a seven. You gotta keep doing it until you get it right. I did the very best I could in the welding program and it really paid off. I got admitted to Lincoln Electric Welding School, which is the leader in the world for welding products and equipment. My teacher helped me out and he called and spoke to the manager and got me into the school. My advice to anyone unsure what they want to study, it doesn't hurt to try. If you think you might like welding, take the class, check it out. What I love about welding is you can physically see the results of everything you do. It's all in your hands. I know what I'm doing with my future Future, and I'm doing it thanks to Lorraine High's Welding Manufacturing Career Tech Program. Fourth quarter about to get underway here at Maple Heights. Boy, what a game this has been. Lake Erie League matchup between Lorraine High and unbeaten Maple Heights. Titans giving the Mustangs all they can handle. 36-25. Lorraine High down by 11 as we start the fourth quarter of play, but the Titans are threatening. They are at the Maple Heights three-yard line on a second down and goal. Ball is at the left hash mark as Lorraine comes all the way to the other end of the field. They now go left to right on your radio dial. I believe we're looking at a direct snap to Dalen Dower. Yep, Dower will head to the left. Dower hit. Now he throws, oh. and he had a receiver, but it fell incomplete. And it's now a third down and goal. Boy, Dower was getting hit as he threw that football. Oh, he had a receiver. Late flag just now. And I'm not sure what that was all about. Boy, that was way after the play. I'm not sure if Adam's standing right there or not. I've kind of lost track of where he is down there, but Shaq Washington is saying that one's against Lorraine High. That's so late you would expect it to be unsportsmanlike conduct or something for. Right. Adam, what do you got down there? Yeah, yeah that, that play happened right in front of me, and, and he did throw it late, but he had a receiver there and open, and I didn't see anybody shoving. Maybe, maybe some words were said that since I'm listening to the broadcast, I didn't pick up on, but. And there's. There's the call, but yeah, it's, uh, I didn't see anything that would lead me to believe that there was uh, any altercation or anything. That's a, that's a strange flag. The legal forward pass, I think, is what they called, uh, Rob. He must have been over the line of scrimmage. Perhaps. That could be. Perhaps he was over. So that now pushes the ball back to the eight-yard line. So it's now back to the eight-yard line. As Lorraine Heim. Snaps it back to Jordan Jackson. Jackson under a rush. Jackson rolling to the right. Jackson being chased. He's to the five, and he spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Jordan Jackson. Jordan Jackson with an eight-yard run, and Lorraine High right back in it. It's now 36-31 with 11.45 to go in the fourth quarter of play. And that's the second time he's been really decisive about deciding to run when his first couple reads weren't there. And he showed some nice speed there at the end as well. I didn't think he was going to make it to the end zone, um, but a little burst got him got him to just to the front pylon. And that's another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop and our Touchdowns to Tackle Hunger campaign. Jamie's Carpet Shop, Route 113 in Amherst, Elyria, and Sandusky. Jordan Jackson, that's his second touchdown run of the night. So Jordan Jackson is putting together a really nice performance. He now has seven touchdowns on the year. 11.45 to go. This is anybody's ball game. Lorraine will now go for two, down by five. Jackson awaits the snap. Jackson hands off. Dower, Dower left side. And he's close. Boy, he had to get there. Let's see. They're going to say no good. Huh. Wow, I thought he tumbled into the end zone. Adam, from your vantage point, what do you got? Right here on the on the goal line, Tim, as Dapper reached for that ball, a Maple Heights defender reached in and knocked it out. So there was a fumble on that play. Uh, it, I don't, doesn't really matter who recovered it, but he definitely fumbled short of the end zone so they don't get the conversion. All right, we were a little shaky down there at the signal, but we got the gist of it. He coughed up the football yep. there. So again, Lorraine does not convert 
on a two-point conversion attempt. How many times has that happened tonight? So it stays a 36-31 ball game. But boy, the Titans giving unbeaten Maple Heights all they can handle as we're down to 11.45 to go fourth quarter of play. So now let's see what Lorraine Haya looks to do on the kickoff. They've been kicking short as Mark Rodriguez tees it up at the 40-yard line. And, of course, kickoffs brought to you by EcoTree Services. Complete tree care is more than removing problem trees. Learn more online at EcoTreeServices.com. How many times did it look like Lorraine was just on the edge of being taken completely out of this game and here we are with almost the entire fourth quarter to go and they're within five points you got to really respect the way they fought back Rodriguez with a short kick fielded at about the 30 by one of the up men for Maple Heights out to the 40 dancing to the 45 and brought down at the 47 yard line where the Mustangs again one of their up men and these numbers are just impossible to read <laughs> so Maple Heights has it first down and 10. Adams' last sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance. Save up to $1,200 via online or mail-in rebate on select GE profile appliances at Stewart's. They're on Cleveland Street in Elyria. That offer will end soon. First down and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 46. They're leading this one 36-31. What an entertaining game. Devin Dial. Mustang quarterback with a look over at the sideline as the play gets signaled in from the Maple Heights coaching staff. Ball to right hash mark. Dial, play action, throws right, caught, and Holloway then extends forward, but boy, a very short gain, maybe to the 50. It looks like there's a flag on that sideline too that was thrown before the pass was thrown. Again, it was to Antoine Holliday, and we've seen Holloway in at quarterback. So he's a multi-purpose guy for this Mustang football team, 5'9", senior. Maybe a sideline warning? Perhaps, although they're going to march it off against oh, no. Maple Heights. Okay. It's an illegal procedure call. It's usually a dead ball foul? Yeah, maybe, maybe it was an alignment thing, because if it comes from that side judge, maybe they didn't have enough players on the line of scrimmage. So it's now first and 15 for the Mustangs at their own 41-yard line. Dial awaits the snap. Titan show blitz. Dial rolling to the left, now steps up, hangs it deep, down the left side, caught! Bates to the 25-20, breaks a tackle, 15, still on his feet, and finally brought down at the 15-yard line. I'll tell you what, we talk about these receivers. Bates just made that catch, Devon Fox. Devin Dial throws right. a nice football. And that, oh, there's a flag on the play. It's going to bring it back. Oh, wow. But, yes, Dial not only plays, he does a great job manipulating the pocket because there was a lot of pressure coming there. He calmly stepped to the right and then up in the pocket to make that throw. So just his, his poise back there is impressive. But they're bringing this one all the way back so you can wipe out that big gain, Devin Dial, to Bernard Bates. Wow, it's a big one all the way down to the 27-yard line. Boy, Maple Heights going backwards here with 11.08 to go here in the fourth quarter of play. Mustangs up 36-31. This has been a dandy for Thursday night football. Dial awaits the snap, three receivers to the left. Dial, draw play, Ramsey, Ramsey to the 30, spun down at about the 35-yard line. That was the play they scored the touchdown on yep. late in the second quarter of play. They got it back to the 35-yard line. Again, they need to get to the Lorraine 44 to get a first down. And a long way to go. Ball to 35 of Maple Heights. Second down. As Dial awaits the snap. Dial rolling left. Plants, throws, and there's a flag on Lorraine High as the receiver was hit right in front of the Mustang bench. That's definitely going to be on Lorraine High as Dalen Dower bumped into that receiver. 
Boy, that's costly there. Oh, my. Yeah, that hurts. It looks like both Dower and the receiver broke on the ball at the same time. And he broke on it so quickly that he almost that he ran through the receiver, and that's what they called the interference on. So they move the ball up to the 46-yard line. So the ball is spotted at the 46-yard line. And it's now second down, but back to 10. <laughs> Seemed to be all the way back to where we started, and now the back judge is coming in. I think the question is, is that an automatic first down on pass interference? I think they want those chains adjusted. Wait a minute. <laughs> now they flipped it to third. I think they wanted to flip the yeah, other way. Yeah, I do. And now Shaq Washington is a few yards out on the field saying, wait a minute. And I think Shaq wants an explanation right here. And now they flip those yard markers over to third down. Adam, what do you got down there? Yeah, that's definitely Back what they are. Uh, they're, they, they were making sure that the yard marker on the far side was, uh, was the right yard marker. That, that was also a, a little bit of a strange call. That looked like that ball was not catchable pretty far over the re receiver's head as I'm down here on the Maple Heights sideline now. Well, now they've got it at second down on the chains. In the meantime, Dial under a rush. Dial sack back at the 40-yard line. Well, you said boom or bust when you come yeah. on that blitz. And right there, that was a boom. That was a lower the boom on Devin Dial in the backfield. Right, and that was like Cairo Smith again really did a nice job of dropping his shoulder and turning the corner on that pass rush. Dial tried again to evade it. You know, he does a nice job back in the pocket, but that was just one he couldn't get away from. So now we've got third and about 16 for Maple Heights. Under 10 minutes to go. Dial gets the snap. Dial looks, throws, and the catch is made at the 44 right at the first down marker. Oh, what a great job by Holloway. He knew exactly where the first down was. He ran a curl pattern and just made the catch as Devontae Jackson dropped him, but 16 yards yeah. on a third and 16. Great route. Again, impressed by Dial's ability to put the ball accurately at the right spot. Huge conversion there by Maple Heights. Wow. First down and 10. Dial runs the option play, pitches it behind him to Ramsey. Ramsey falls forward to the 45-yard line. Adam Cahill's last sideline report brought to you by Stewart Appliance. The name brands you trust, free delivery, financing, and they service what they sell. Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. Loss of one will make it second down and 11. Maple Heights hanging on to a five-point lead, 36-31 in what has been a very entertaining game here at Maple Heights Stadium. Well, we got flags again. Things have been halted for a moment. Again, Maple Heights first-year head coach Shaq Washington out on the field. Ooh, we've got a personal foul against Maple Heights. Things are getting a little chippy they here in the be. fourth quarter of play. They're going to march 15 off against the Mustangs. Well, that's a big penalty. So they put the ball down at the 39-yard line. Well, Lorraine High has been given a break right here because they gave up the first down on third and 16. But now the 15-yard unsportsmanlike call against Maple Heights pushes them all the way back again. As we hit the nine minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Dial rolling left, here comes the heat. Brings it down the field, caught again. Bates at the 40, 35-30, breaks away, touchdown. Oh my. Dial eluded the heat and he dialed up Bates. A 61 yard strike. And it's now a 42 to 31 Mustang lead. And again, I'll go back to the fact Dial throws a great ball, but these receivers are so well coached and they are so fundamentally sound. Yes, and, and, and with great skill. You combine great skill with great fundamentals and you got a heck of a football player out there. And Maple Heights has at least two um, great re receivers that are just great high school receivers. 
61 yards. Bates from Dial. And with 8.53 to go, Maple Heights will now go for two. 42-31, Dial looks, throws to the end zone, and it is caught. And it's now a 44-31 ball game. Wow. We'll keep it right here with 8.53 left. Of course, that touchdown from Maple Heights means another $10 to Second Harvest Food Bank, courtesy of Jamie's Carpet Shop. Jamie's on Route 113 at Amherst. They're also in Elyria and Sandusky. 44-31. Maple Heights by 13. Hey, don't forget after the ball game, the Nick Abraham Auto Mall post game show brought to you by Nick Abraham Buick GMC and Nick Abraham Elyria Ford. We'll have our Lorain County Community College player of the game. And we'll also have the U.S. Army Team Strength Award. We'll bring you some post-game highlights. We won't bring you all the highlights. <laughs> we want to be home right. in time to catch the last set of Gary and the Enablers. <laughs> you know, they hit the stage for the final time about 145 and take you right up until closing time. Wow. That's pretty impressive for... Past your bedtime, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> I don't know if I'd make it to the end of the first set. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we go. Kickoff brought to you by Eco Tree Services. Maple Heights kicking off. Short bouncing kick. It's loose, and they've got it. Maple Heights has it at the Titan 46-yard line. Lorraine High not able to come up with it. Oh my! It's a crestfallen Lorraine High player. Nate Melendez wasn't able to grab it. And Maple Heights gets it back with 8.51 to go. They lead it by 13. His teammates are doing a really great job of getting over there and trying to tell him to get over it, let's play some football. But you know what? Lorraine has avoided the knockout punch a few times this game. So here they are again, down two touchdowns trying to defend the field against this really explosive Maple Heights offense. Well, they average 44 points per game, and that's where they're at right now. 44-31, they lead it, 8.51 to go. Dial rolling left, short side of the field. Dial got a nice block, and then he got hit out of bounds, and there's the flag. Boy, Dial got a great block, and then as he went into that Mustang bench, he took a pretty good pop over there, and they're going to tack some more yardage onto that. So they'll put 15 more. I think. Yep. And so now Maple Heights can deliver that knockout right. punch. As with 8.44 to go, they suddenly will have the ball inside the 30-yard line of Lorraine High. That ball will be spotted at about the 27-yard line. First down. For the Mustangs, they lead it 44-31 with 8.44 to go. And I would think Shaq Washington right here will just keep his foot on the pedal. It's what's got you to 7-0. Right, and why not when you've got Bates and Fox out there to throw to? Dial keeps it himself tripped up at the 24-yard line. Gain of three. We'll make it second down and seven. Again, Lorraine High home for their final two games. Next Friday night, they'll be taking on Bedford. And then the regular season finale for the Titans will be against Shaw over at George Daniel Field. And, of course, that beautiful new turf field, courtesy of the Cleveland Browns. If you're a Titan fan and haven't had a chance to see it, two opportunities in the next two Fridays. They run Bates on a reverse. He gets the handoff. He's to the 10 to the 5. He's in for the touchdown, but there's a flag on the play. Again, that, fly, that flag came flying, and I think this one's coming back. Yep. You know, we mentioned that Shaq Washington, first-year head coach at Maple Heights, great star here for the Mustangs, led them to the 2010 state championship. In fact, in that state championship game, he accounted for all seven of 
Maple Heights' touchdowns, went to Cincinnati, became their all-time leading receiver. He actually did get a tryout with the San Diego Chargers, the then San Diego right. Chargers in the NFL. Unfortunately, tore a hamstring, and that really hampered any opportunity to play in the NFL. But, you know, you talk to Shaq down on the field, he did before the ball game, not the biggest of guys, 5'9". Exactly what I was going to say. Not, not only his height, but he's, he's a skinny guy, too. Yeah. You know? That's so you think about getting that NFL tryout. That shows you the skill level correct. that he had. Correct. Yeah. Wow. And again, just a terrific guy. It was really cool to talk to him. Talked to him on the phone, actually, last night for quite a while. And then uh, had a really neat pregame conversation with him on the Cobos Insurance Center pregame show. Ball back to the 30-yard line after the penalty. Dial looking, throwing over the middle. Ball. Oh, what a wow. catch at the 20 and brought down at the 15-yard line. I believe it was Abrams again. Let's give credit where it's due, but... Or Holloway? <laughs> what do you think? I think it was Holloway, Two, actually, now that I look. Seven? Yes. Wow. What a catch. One-handed stab. Puts the ball at the 14-yard line. Actually, the 13-yard line, first down and 10. Boy, they have skill. Dial awaits the snap. Dial fakes the handoff, keeps it himself to the 10, and lunges forward to about the 8-yard line. And that clock just keeps ticking now on Lorraine High as we're down to 7.35 to go. Again, tonight's Gridiron Clash brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic, the latest treatment options in Lorraine County for knee or hip pain. Call 440-204-7800 for your appointment. Ball spotted at the eight-yard line, and we'll get a sideline update from Adam Cahill after this second down play from the eight. Dial. Again, is going to keep it himself as he's hemmed in and dropped at the 10. We also have flags flying. So as we sort it all out, let's head down to Adam Cahill. Adam? Yeah, Tim, I, I could confirm that that was uh, Holloway on that catch, and that almost worked out better for him um, to give him some room to run because as that ball started to juggle a little bit, the, you could see the Lorraine defender that was right behind the play start to kind of brace himself for the ball to come to him and get the interception. That gave, uh, that gave Holloway a little bit of extra room once he was able to corral that ball to get a couple of extra yards. Good job down there by Adam Cahill as he describes what happened right there in front of him as Adam has moved over here to the near side. A legal procedure call against Maple Heights. I think Lorraine High actually declined that penalty because they're trying to move this clock along and give themselves an opportunity to get the ball back. So it's now third and six from the 10-yard line, and Dave McFarland said, we'll decline it. Dial on a little bit of a reverse play. They hand it off, and boy, Lorraine was waiting for that play. They blew it up back at the 15-yard line. So it's now fourth down and 11 at the 15. But again, for Lorraine, that clock is just rapidly flying by on them. We're down to six and a half minutes to go. Although now Maple will line up quickly. Facing a fourth and 11 at the 15. They've got four receivers to the left, one to the right. Dial by himself in the backfield. Devin gets the snap, looking, throwing to the back of the end zone, and he overshot Bates. Boy, he had him open. Bates had a couple of steps on the defender. So at 44-31, to 31, Lorraine not quite done yet. They will get the ball back. They've got a long field ahead of them and not a lot of clock. So they're going to have to dial up something pretty quickly. Yeah, but they're still standing. Yes, they have are. Have not been knocked out yet, so six minutes is not a ton of time, but... At least they're still in the game. Adam Cahill's last sideline report brought to you by Stewart's TV and Appliance. Stewart's on Cleveland Street in Elyria. A beautiful kitchen doesn't have to cost a lot. Ask about the GE Cafe. Update your kitchen program at Stewart's. First down and 10. Jordan Jackson will set the Lorraine High offense. They trail it by 13. A little bit of reverse play. Now Evans is going to throw it down the field. Has a receiver. 35-40. Look out to the 50. 45. 40 and all the way down to the Maple 34-yard line. 
I believe it was Dower. Dower that caught the pass from Evans, I believe. Boy, sort that one all out. As you said, Dave keeps dipping into the bag of tricks. How do you practice all these plays? On a short week. <laughs> On a short week. <laughs> <laughs> well, here comes Lorraine with 5.48 to go. They have it at the Maple 33-yard line. Quick hitter to the left. Tyshawn Lighty hemmed in and dropped. He may have gotten out of bounds, which would be a break for Lorraine. It would stop the clock. It was that short side of the field. No, they're going to keep it running. Five and a half minutes to go. Lorraine down 44-31. So they need a score and they need to get that ball back. It's a tall order, but we're not done yet here at Maple Heights. Ball at the left hash mark as Jackson awaits the snap. Jordan Jackson looking left, throws over the middle, complete to Evans. Evans hit and dropped at about the 26-yard line. Zach Evans shy of the first down, so that clock will continue to move. We're under five minutes to go. Third down and about two. Well, he is a big target, 6'4", yeah. senior. Evans to the left along with Devontae Jackson. To the right, Carrillo Edwards. And now Cairo Smith will jog in motion to the left. Three receiver set, Isaiah McDowell in the backfield with Jordan Jackson. Jackson looking left. Quick hitter to Devontae Jackson. Spins out of a tackle, but then he stood right up at the 25-yard line. And now the game has basically come down to this fourth down play for Lorraine High. If they want to have any hopes, they need to convert on another fourth down. I was going to say apropos that this game comes down to another fourth down because fourth down has been really one of the stories in this game. We haven't seen Lorraine's punting unit, have we? They've gone to forward on every fourth down? I believe so. Fourth and two at the 25 with under four minutes to go. Jackson in motion to the right as Jordan Jackson awaits the snap. Jordan inside handoff McDowell and I don't think he got it. Oh, that's a pretty good spot. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Where this where this near side official is jogging in. Wow, it will be close. I didn't think he even got near that first down marker. <laughs> he got it. They didn't even have to measure. Wow. All right. So Lorraine still with a heartbeat. 3.45 to go. They're down 44-31. McDowell got that first down. Lorraine with two timeouts remaining. Jordan Jackson in that pistol. First and 10 Titans at the 23-yard line of Maple. Jackson gets the snap. Little pump fake. Now he throws down to the 15-yard line. Ball is coughed up. And it's a fumble return for Maple Heights and out to the 25-yard line. Will go, I believe, Ramsey. And that's going to do it. I thought, I believe it was Evans on the reception, but I thought his knee may have been down. But this isn't the NFL, folks. We're not going to have instant replay. Right. And I think some coaches on Lorraine's sideline don't think he ever had control of it to begin with. I think it was an incomplete pass. But again, like you said, we're not, there's no red flags to be thrown. Yep. So that should put the finishing touches on it. 3.18 to go. 44-31. Maple Heights gets the football back. They're up by 13. Lorraine does have two timeouts left. But this Mustang offense tonight as it has been all year long. Virtually impossible to stop. Boy, the weapons they have to utilize are impressive. One of those being Devin Dial, their terrific quarterback. And Dial awaits the snap. Inside handoff, Ramsey, he almost coughed it up, although he's dropped at the 28-yard line. Gain of three. See if Lorraine High uses one of those two remaining timeouts. They do not. So we're down to three minutes to go in the football game. Again, after the contest, our Nick Abraham Automall post game brought to you by Nick Abraham Buick GMC and Nick Abraham Elyria Ford. Second down and eight. 
And Devin Dial doing the smart thing, looking at that back judge, looking right at him to wait for that five-second indication. There it is as he winds the play clock down. They throw it. Quick hitter to the right, out to the 30, 35, 40, and spun down at about the 44-yard line. Not sure who that was. I was trying to listen to the PA announcer, but I couldn't understand what I he was said too. Either. Exact same thing. Going, who's he saying? Well, it's coming back anyway. Holding call against Maple Heights, so that'll push them back. But again, for Maple Heights right now, the question is, can they just run out the clock? <laughs> How about Dalen Dower here on the near side, coming up to Shaq Washington? They're having a little conversation. <laughs> Jack, I heard you were good. I heard you were real good. <laughs> or maybe he's called him Coach Washington. Maybe. Coach, I heard you were real good. <laughs> or maybe it's not a, that friendly of a conversation. <laughs> that that sure. could be too. <laughs> Ball pushed back to the 17-yard line after the holding call on Maple Heights. Devin Dial awaits the snap in that pistol formation. Again, waiting for the back judge to make that five-second call. I love when quarterbacks do that. That's just coaching right there. You can look right at him and get the call. Inside handoff, Ramsey. Ramsey got spun down. There's a flag right in the middle of that scrum. You wonder if they got him by the face mask. Let's see. Well, that flag came flying in there, and they did. They got him by the face mask. Sometimes you can just see that. Even if you don't see that head twist, just by the way the official right. throws that flag right. in the middle of a scrum. That's not normally when you see the holding call. And it's a face masking call against Lorraine. Again, they're in there grabbing and ripping, trying to get that football out of there. And you may have that face mask. Adam, is that what you saw? Uh, actually, Tim, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm down here looking at, uh, at Dalen Dower. <laughs> He's trying to get a little intel. He's doing a little espionage here, trying to hear what uh, what Coach Washington is, <laughs> is, is telling his quarterback, yeah. Devin Dial, right now. They're, they're having a little bit of a laugh about it. <laughs> Second and 15 from the 20-yard line. Dial looks, throws, and it's incomplete. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a dangerous pass right there. Yep, yeah. Yep. Because if the Lorraine High defender reads that, he can step right in front of it and literally waltz in from 15 right. yards and out. And we're getting down to the point that, you know, for, if Maple Heights were to lose this game, it would have to be like a five-second touchdown. And you're, all, you're giving them a chance for that. Yeah. There's no reason not to run the ball here. Because, again... Lorraine High is down to two timeouts, and they need two scores. Third and a long way to go for the Mustangs. At their own 20-yard line, they need to get to the 36. There's that draw play to Ramsey. Ramsey out to the 28, 29, and he's dropped there. So with 150, 149 to go, Lorraine High will take one of their remaining two timeouts. That sideline report from Adam Cahill brought to you by Stewart Appliance. Stewart Appliance. Right now, you can save up to $1,200 via online or mail-in rebate on select GE profile appliances at Stewart's. They're on Cleveland Street in Elyria. That offer ends soon. So Lorraine High has one timeout left. Maple Heights facing fourth down and six at their own 29-yard line. They would need to get to the 35. Maple Heights looking to go to 8-0 on the year. Coming off a 4-6 and six year last year, Shaq Washington takes over as the head coach at his alma mater. And he has led them to what appears to be, or at least on the brink of an 8-0 season. <laughs> Had the joke with Coach Washington before the ball game when I said, here's a coach that's never lost as a varsity head coach. Right, Jack Washington. Right. <laughs> he got a chuckle out of that, actually. <laughs> All right, Maple Heights will punt. So can Lorraine High catch lightning in a bottle? And now we've got some movement. And it's an illegal procedure call against Maple. That's going to push him back five yards. So Lorraine High is going to end up with great field position. 
Now, again, you're looking at a miraculous sort of finish here. But, again, they're going to get great field right. position in a short field. They need two scores, trailing 44-31. Snap back. Punter. Oh, he oh. shanked it. Boy, you talk about great field position inside the 20, and it will roll dead at the 16. It went backwards. Now he's going into the wind, but right. my goodness. Yep. Oh, my. So there's still a heartbeat. There's still life for Lorraine High. They're going to need a quick score and an onside kick. But they couldn't be set up any more perfectly as far as, well, at least if something positive can happen in a minute and 36 seconds. How about starting at the Maple 16-yard line? That ball went straight up in the air. One timeout at their disposal. Lorraine has it. Well, they spot it at the 17. 17 yard line of Maple Heights. First down and 10. Jordan Jackson making the snap calls. Actually, they pitch it right side. Here comes Lady. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. He's in for the touchdown. It's not over yet. <laughs> Tyshawn Lady. A 17-yard reverse for a score. 44-37 with 128 to go. What a great way to spend a Thursday night. <laughs> wow. Tyshawn Lighty came in motion to the right. The snap to Jackson. He said, I'm pitching it to Lighty. And it was Lighty in a bottle <laughs> for Lorraine High. <laughs> Wow! And now on to attempt the extra point for Lorraine High is Mark Rodriguez. They're down by seven. So Rodriguez will attempt to make this a six-point game. Matt Weatherspoon is the holder. The kick is up, and he drilled it. 44-38 with 128 to go. An onside kick to come for Lorraine High. How about that? Let's get a sideline update with Adam Cahill. Adam, I'll tell you what, I don't know if Maple Heights is going to recover this onside kick right here and win this football game, but how about the grit shown by Lorraine High? It's it's extremely impressive. I mean, this, I, I think, well, I've been, I've been working games with you for five, six years now, Tim, and I think this is the wildest one we've ever seen. Uh, I mean, a, a backwards punt, and on the first play, a, a great call up there by Coach McFarland because you're expecting them to pass. They only have the one timeout. They keep it on the ground, and then just a fantastic run uh, by by Ta by Tayshawn Lighty or Tyshawn Lighty. I'm sorry, and I, you're not out of it yet. You recover this kick. You still have a minute. You'll probably have about a minute and 22 seconds and a timeout. Wow. And you'll have great field position. That's a great call and a pretty wild series of events over the last minute and a half here. Well, here we go. Uh, this kickoff brought to you by Eco Tree Services will no doubt be some sort of onside kick or pooch kick to try to give Lorraine High a chance to recover. 128 to go. The Titans are still hanging in there. There's the bouncing kick. It rolls free. It's loose. It's inside the 40, and it's scooped up by a Maple Heights player. Out to the 40, 45, 50, and finally knocked out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Well, Lorraine High bunched everybody in the middle, and they just kind of rolled it down the middle. I thought they might have touched it before it went I 10. I did, too. I did, too, and, and it's... I think that the uh, officials did throw a beanbag down there at about eight yards. So even if they would have recovered it, I don't think it would have counted. But it sure was exciting with the ball rolling around out right. there for such a long time. So Maple Heights did end up with the football. And then they return it to the Titan 45-yard line. 118 to go. Maple Heights on top, 44-38. And what has been... One of the more entertaining high school football games that we have been involved with in a long time. Boy, if you like offense and big plays and unique plays and a little bit of everything, this was the one for you tonight. 
fun game. Only Devin Dial is still going to be in that pistol formation at the 45 of Lorraine High. Dial, he's gonna, or actually that's Holloway. Holloway keeps it himself. Holloway to the right down about the 40-yard line. Got about five. Not sure if Lorraine High is going to use that final timeout or not. They've got one. Ball spotted at the 40. Clock continues to run. We're under a minute to go. Again, the Nick Abraham Automall postgame show to follow. We'll have our Lorraine County Community College player of the game and our U.S. Army Team Strength Award. Back judge puts that five-second signal up. And I believe that's Holloway on a direct snap. Holloway hit and driven down at the 39. And Dave McFarland says, all right, we'll take that final timeout. No need to bring it on the bus with us <laughs> on the back to, on the ride back to Lorraine County. So Lorraine High burns their final timeout with 30 seconds to go. I'll tell you what, you have to credit Lorraine High. Came over here tonight. One and one in the LEL, four and three overall, taking on an unbeaten Maple Heights team. Had opportunities. Hung in there until the very end. And again, I'll credit Maple Heights as well. This is a fun team to watch. Yeah. Offensive explosiveness. They could do some damage yeah. in those D2 playoffs. I look forward to watching them in the playoffs. I would think Maple Heights would take a knee right here. Again, Lorraine High is out of timeouts. Third down play. They're going to direct snap in that pistol to Holloway. Antoine Holloway will get the snap. And you would think he'll just go down. <laughs> He's going to run backwards. Holloway all the way back to his own 40. Now he bumps into his own player back at his own 35. Lorraine tried to strip that ball out, and they finally bring him down at the 37. And that will be the final play of the ball game. Maple Heights does not have to run a final play, and so that will do it. Our final score here at Maple Heights Stadium in a terrific high school football game. Maple Heights 44, Lorraine High 38. Titans dropped to one and two in the LEL, four and four overall. Maple is now three and zero oh in league play, and they remain unbeaten. They are eight and zero oh overall. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools TV20 WLCS.